Good morning. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> How you doing this morning? It's Bruce here with the Stock Markets with Bruce, where we like to talk about the stock market in plain English. I try to explain to you what's going on in plain English, if, it, if it's at all possible. Welcome one, welcome all to the show from around the world. Um, I know we have viewers uh, from everywhere, and I'm glad you're here. If you don't mind, tell me, where are you watching me from today? Uh, what's your high temperature going to be today? Are you you in winter now? Are you folks in warm climates? Where are you guys? Let me know, where are you? Welcome one, welcome all to the uh, telecast from around the world. Uh, today is Wednesday, and tomorrow in the USA, it's... Uh, Thanksgiving and uh, the markets will be closed tomorrow. I will not be on the air tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is a desperately needed day off <laughs> that I'm going to take. Um, John is saying, I'm here from the UK, old boy. Uh, Sam says, I'm in Finland. It's five degrees Celsius on the plus side. Cindy is here, 35 degrees in Michigan. Mr. Lavernot, the Netherlands, Len, uh, Sarasota, 48 right now, high of 75 today. Peter, Clark, M. E. Spire program, down, 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 uh, steady, uh, mystic, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Tell me where you're from. What's your temperature going to be today? Maryland, 26 degrees. Um, humanities, uh, Northern California, right off the freeway. DQ, Pittsburgh, PA, high 46, low 17. Uh, Suckstail, morning, over South Florida. It is so cold here. Unbelievable. That's crazy. Uh, we're going to be here in the desert. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look here. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, we're going to be, right now we're at 59, and we're heading for 75 degrees today, red day today, Gerhard, the Dominican Republic, Omaha, Nebraska, 57, Somerset, UK, Black Friday sale on stock, uh, if you lost, if you lost Lucid Run, uh, let's see, Lord of Heraquad, a green, green bow, Alabama, uh, <laughs> Ireland, damp as per usual, Brisbane, Australia, 28 Celsius, hot and humid, Dirty Harry, there's there will be blood. <laughs> Fernando, Santa Monica, Western Massachusetts, uh, 29 warm. Um, Vancouver, got to be another rainy day. Let's hope the floods don't get worse. Jimmy's uh, GameStop, Happy Thanksgiving, Uncle B, 36 in Oregon. Lorraine is here, Atlanta, Georgia, USA, preparing for Thanksgiving, 32 going to 59. El Boogie, Dubai, um, Swiss Buddha, Swiss Buddha. Uh, Shen Shenandoah Valley, Virginia, 20 degrees. How about that? Humanities uh, flirt 62 in Northern Carolina. John, 46 uh, and a half outside, rather comfortable, 69 in my office, drinking tea. Steady Mystic, best of luck. Steven, uh, I have 700 Spire at 570. Orlando, and uh, Beach Boy is Israel. Frankie, uh, Long Beach in New York, but with my mindset is on the moon. Louisville, Kentucky, says Jay Smith. 35 over there. Uh, H7 Polo, I was 65th thumbs up. Ashley, 25 in New Hampshire. Um, uh, Deb is, is here. Hi, Deb Shannon. Tampa, 51, but another cruise this week. We'll check in from the Caribbean on Monday. I'll let you know how empty it is this time. Flesh infection, 27, New Hampshire. Um, yeah, let's see. Jersey, uh, good morning. I'll be 32 degrees in New Jersey. Jay, 64 degrees in Bouton, Baton, uh, Boca Raton, sorry, Florida, going to 74. Rob, Gatineau, Quebec, minus 7 Celsius right now. Hector, Paya, Del Carmen, Mexico will be 26, or Mexico will be 26, excuse me. Balmy, 14 below in Regina, Saskatchewan, a city that rhymes with fun. <laughs> Cheryl, 3 Celsius. <laughs> Abacus, are thumbs ups, man. Nephew, Granada Hills, California, 55 now, 75 later. Yeah, Interman, Toronto, 8 Celsius. Welcome from T.O. Uh, Joanne, sweet, another eight bargoons today. Well, we'll see how it goes. Welcome one, welcome all to the show from wherever you are. It's fabulous. Uh, 16 in Edmonton right now. Welcome from uh, Mr. Lavendel. Uh, how are you doing today? Hope you are as excited as we are. Green Candles, 40s in Chicago. Um, I call that a bargoon, the best I ever had. There you go. <laughs> I hit <had> neighbor. <laughs> St. Louis, right on. Welcome all. Um, well, you know, what's going on today? We're, we're looking at the Dow down 144 in the pre-market, 0.4%, uh, uh, S&P down 15, NASDAQ down 66. Not much uh, not much uh, activity here, you know, less than half a percentage point. It is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I don't expect a busy day. We'll be closed tomorrow. We'll be open half a day Friday. That's it. That's all we're going to do. Um, there, was, there are some stocks on sale right now, but I don't know if they're going to be uh, big bargains. Uh, there might be slight pullbacks to start the morning, but uh, that can turn rather quickly. 
if we don't get heavy volume, and I don't think we will, um, then you can have quick turnarounds too. You can have dramatic, fast turnarounds um, and meaningful. So um, don't be uh, don't be dissuaded and, and fooled that, oh gosh, you know, we're down to start the day. It's going to be a bad day. Um, you actually get the selling out of the way in the first half hour to an hour. Then there's no selling left. Everybody who wanted out got out. Anyone who's nervous overnight got nervous, put their sell orders. They got taken out. They're gone. All of a sudden, the bargain hunters look around going, where, where's all this cheap paper? I, I got stink bits lower than this, not getting hit. Then they start chasing bids. And uh, the psychology changes and people go, ooh, we're going the other direction here. Um, I better get in before the, the deals are gone. And the next thing you know, you, uh, you have a break even on the market and then you have a gain. And the gain is sudden and is dramatic because there is nothing left for sale. Everybody wanted out, got out. <clears throat> um, what changed in the last three days that would make people want to sell stock? What, the, the aliens have let, <coughs> landed in Peoria? I mean, what? Nothing. Excuse me. Um, no, not a lot going on. Um, the 10-year note, um, as far as interest rates go, it's 1.66666 right now. Who cares? Um, if you had a 1.66 interest rate for all your debt, all your credit cards, car loans, mortgages, personal loans, student loans, if it was all 1.666, would you be all that worried and upset about life? Uh, I think a lot of you would be going, 1.66, I'll take that rate. I'll lock that in for 10 years. Give me that rate any old time. Well, that's what the American taxpayer is paying right now, 1.666 on, theoretically anyway, on 10-year notes. This is a hardship for Americans. Oh, give me a break. Uh, come on. Uh, Americans make 1.666% return on their investments. Having a cup of coffee every morning at Starbucks. Come on. I mean, jeez. Uh, give me a break. Uh, you know, the thing is, being old like I am, old and crusty at age 66, old, old man. <laughs> I remember interest rates when they used to be five to uh, well four to seven percent. They were always four to seven percent, and you would borrow money to get a car from your banker. You'd you'd pay if you were lucky, you'd pay six percent. Inflation was four, you'd pay six. Uh, but if you were uh, younger, you'd pay seven seven and a half. And if you were you know you had some problems in the past, and you're just trying to get back on your feet, you'd be paying eight eight and a half. Um, personal line of credit, no such thing. There, there was no such thing as a personal line of credit. I mean, millionaires got lines of credit, but they didn't need them. Like, it's, you know. um, businesses, uh, business loans, um, five to 10% typical interest rate all the time. And they made money paying those kinds of interest payments. <laughs> See, the thing too, that, that you have to understand out there as, as, uh, as investors and as viewers and as youngsters, <laughs> Um, this, this world we're in right now, this low interest rate environment thing we're in here, this has been going on now for over 20 years. This has been a long time and it is abnormal 20 years. Um, Japan has been in this now for 40, by the way, Japan has been in a recession and has been underperforming since 1984, 85. It's almost 20, 40 years. Um, unusual. Um, in any event, um, when businesses would take loans out <clears throat> at say 10% interest, inflation would five would be five or six, and they'd have 10% interest. It's not like um, <clears throat> it's not like you have a business <clears throat> say that um, is worth uh, <clears throat> let's say it's worth five billion dollars. Just picking the number, business is worth five billion dollars in today's terms. It's not like you have a, a $25 billion loan. Again, it's the $5 billion business. And that the 10% interest you're paying is $2.5 billion a year on $25 billion in loans. You, you, you'd have like a billion in loans out of a $5 billion business. And you'd pay interest on the billion, which would be $100 million a year, on a $5 billion business. And that it's a small percentage of the business's value. And Inflation alone allowed businesses to bump their prices every year. And so the, the game plan was, and, and this is how governments got out of deficit spending in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, and how they will get out of today's deficit spending. How do they do it? It's simple. You borrow money today and you lock in the interest rate. Uh, and it's you've locked in the, the commitment, how much you borrow, in today's dollars. So uh, 
back in 75 and 76 and 77 uh and in the 80s and the 90s businesses would borrow governments would borrow uh, money and for every dollar they borrowed they would have to pay interest on it but they would structure their loans in such a way that many governments would pay just the interest because the bonds would be set up as like a 10-year note and at the end of the 10-year note the note had to be paid off in full so a government would borrow you know a million dollars a hundred million dollars whatever the number was so every dollar they borrowed they had to pay the dollar off 10 years later well by the time 10 years rolled down there rolled along inflation at five to seven percent a year in the good old days when that when this was normal you you had um governments now borrowing instead of borrowing for every like a dollar in 1970 they were in 1980 they were borrowing four dollars or 275 because that was the equivalent but the reality is that the the new go the government borrowing new money was using 275 dollars to pay off one dollar debts it was wonderful and so taxpayers were theoretically um um in on <laughs> in on the game where we the taxpayer would pay interest on that one dollar every year for 10 years and it would be like a five percent interest rate because governments would have lower rates we'd have higher rates right people would pay more than governments would pay it's still true today so you're paying five percent interest in 1970 until 1980 on a 10-year note you pay your five percent on the dollar so it's five cents every dollar you borrow okay well every year uh, your tax bill went up your property tax bill went up your utilities went up your your inflation made things go higher which meant that that sales tax revenue kept coming in and kept growing because if sales tax is six and a quarter percent where you live or eight percent or four percent seven percent whatever it is um prices would go up and the percentage of the the sales tax would be on the price of the good and so every five every year the prices go up eight to ten percent five percent eight percent the taxes would go up five and eight percent and so governments were hauling in more money every year from inflation and at the end of the 10 years the government needed to pay off that one dollar loan or a million or 100 million whatever they borrowed in 1970 with 275 dollars the the, the, the 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 debt was a joke and so you think about that with 30 year government debt think ahead now 30 years and even if your inflation rate is uh, four percent a year 30 years of inflation down the road let's just think about this in 1980 they were paying off 1950 debt if they had issued 30-year notes in 2010 they were paying off 1980 debt okay how much was a new car in 1980 just to kind of put this into perspective for everybody how much was a new house in 1980 versus 2010 or right now it's 2022 2021 1991 what were the prices of 1991 there's 30 year no notes coming due this is where governments win this is where businesses would win as well because businesses would take businesses would take loans out bond issues that would be repayable in say 5 10 15 or 20 years but it would be at the old dollars by the time they paid those old dollars off they're paying with the new dollars which are deflated but a dollar is a dollar and if you owe 10 million dollars on an old business loan and it's now 20 years later and you got to pay that that old 20 billion 20 million dollar loan off and nowadays you're borrowing a billion every time you roll over your debt to pay off that 20 million is a joke it's inflation adjusted super cheap it's free money it is free money because if the interest rate that you're being charged is equal to or lower than inflation you win you, you, your loan actually is free due to, because of inflation because you're able to raise your prices every year to stay ahead of it now our parents my parents my mom and dad bought a house in 1967 in uh, Waterloo Ontario Canada it was thirty four thousand dollars or thirty two thousand dollars <laughs> I find that so I I, I chortle now thirty two thousand a fortune back at that time but my dad had uh, I don't know five thousand down and and got a mortgage for the rest um they sold the house for eighty eight thousand dollars um about uh, how long later Bruce about 20 years later so they almost tripled their money but they didn't triple their money 
because all houses were $88,000. However, the mortgage they took out could have been 27,000. 20 years later, they might have owed 5,000 on this thing. And they got $88,000. So in today's world, we look at real estate from 19, look, look at real estate, 1991. If you bought a house in 1991, say where I came from in Calgary, you would have paid about uh, 125,000 for a house that today is a half a million dollars. It's adjusted for inflation, but the mortgage is the old amount. And this is how the game is played. And so governments, politicians today tell you the voter, we cannot give you uh, health care. We cannot give you uh, child care. We cannot give you, uh, we can't put in any other kind of social programs because we can't afford it. It's, it's bunk. You can highly, completely afford it. <laughs> you can more than afford it. The question is, uh, do you want to add debt today? Let inflation be 3 4% for the next 15, 20, 30, 40 years, and then pay off the loan in adjust, uh, inflation-adjusted dollars. In the meantime, giving health care to people, home care to people, uh, child care, um, um, schools get their dough, free college education, uh, you know, all the all the social stuff that wants to be done. It can be done. You just have to want to do it. Europeans have been doing this since the Second World War. <laughs> Europeans have known since the Second World War there will always be inflation because after the Second World War, uh, there was some pretty crazy inflation in, in the defeated countries of Europe. There was some pretty bad inflation. But um, the governments have always known, yeah, future generations will carry this debt, but the debt they will carry will be inflation adjusted. It'll be a joke. Now, I got to tell you a little story. This is just off the beaten path, and um, and uh, it's, a, it's an inflation story, it's sort of. It's a money story. Um, I was watching my YouTube uh, channel last night. I love watching YouTube videos. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure you do. And I caught a, a story last night. I caught a video that had been made about the history of this area in where we are right now here in, in Palm Desert, Rancho Mirage, Indian Wells, Palm Springs, La Quinta, this whole region, this whole valley. This is a fascinating place. I, 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 I really love it. And I, I saw a really interesting uh, show about the history of the um, one of the first golf courses built here outside of Palm Springs itself, and that is uh, the Tamarask Golf and Country Club, the Tamarask Golf Club. And um, there was the Thunderbird Golf Club and the Tamarask Golf Club, both in, in uh, on ranch land that was not part of any town when they started up, but they're now part of Rancho Mirage. And um, the Tamarask Club was open to all, so there was no, uh, you could be Jewish, you could be, <laughs> you could be Italian, you could be, you could be any, anything, and you could join the club. Uh, Thunderbird was restricted. Uh, it was white only, uh, very, you know, and that was typical in the 1950s. Many clubs, many organizations were, were very restricted. Um, uh, and it was generally because of your skin color and your religion. Uh, but the Tamarask, wide open. And Frank Sinatra, became a member of Tamarask because Frank Sinatra, one of Frank Sinatra's best friends was Sammy Davis Jr., um, black man Jewish. <laughs> like, whoa, couldn't get into any club, but he could get into Tamarask. And uh, and Frank Sinatra was known for this, uh, very liberal guy and uh, had friends from every stripe you can imagine. In the event, I'm watching this, this historical show about Tamarask, about the building of the golf club and how it used to be a, a date farm uh, growing dates, and then uh, the, the entrepreneur um, modified the date farm and built cottages and a swimming pool that had kind of a little resort there, a getaway resort. Then he was approached by people from Hillcrest Country Club in L.A. Would you be interested in building a golf course out here? Because we here in Hillcrest in L.A. would love to come out on weekends, play golf with you guys. And so he made a, they made a business deal, and Ben Hogan was involved in it in the early days. This is 52, 53, 54 way back when when this uh, out here there's only like four or five miles from where i am there was nothing other than desert and the odd date farm ranch and people who had uh, uh ranches for horses and whatnot uh hardy folks because oh there was no air conditioning and all that in any event they built this golf course in tamarisk and they designed into the golf course design and master plan lots for houses because 
Thunderbird had built houses around its golf course. And now Tamarask was thinking, we'll do the same thing. And a bunch of Hollywood folks started buying up the lots. And over the years, lots changed hands, but slowly but surely, houses would get built on these lots. But these lots weren't like lots we see today in big city America or big city Canada, where you know it's got 40 foot frontage and it's 80 feet deep or 100 feet deep when you have these long skinny townhouses like we have today. That's suburbia now. We're talking ranch style homes back then. We're talking about architectural wonders that were built back then. We're talking about the kind of folks that would build a home in Rancho Mirage on a golf course when there was no services around here. Uh, there was a, there was power. They got power out there, electricity. They they had that. Phone lines eventually, no cable in, in the fifties. Uh, but they would hire top end architects to design these stunning one of a kind homes that to this day are still here to this very day. And uh, many of them are now historical buildings can't be torn down, can't be modified. Uh, you can't grotesquely change them. You can you can bring them up to building code standards, of course, but um, you can't gut them without uh, serious uh, approval from the city of Rancho Mirage. And now the city of Palm Desert is in on it. Palm, Palm Springs is in on it, preserving history. And uh, homes like the compound that Frank Sinatra built were built. Red Skelton had a house out there. The Marx Brothers were here. All the original founders were, were out here, original Hollywood type. Bob Hope, of course, was here. Um, Jack Benny, um, uh, Danny Kay, all the stars of the day, the 50s. Anyway, I saw this one house that was being um, highlighted by this uh, historian, which I found fascinating. And I can't tell you the name, I can't tell you anything, but I can, I can give you an idea. It was, it was a house that was built in around 56, 57, 1956, 57, beautiful, stunning design. And the owner of the house, the eventual owner of the house, was sitting down one, one day with the architect. And they were haggling over what the house would look like and what it would have, what features it would have. And this is late 50s now. Just think about this, late 50s. And wanted a pool in the middle and wanted the, kind of a U-shape around the pool. And the opening would be out to the golf course. And the, 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 the front of the house would actually be not so dramatic because it would be to the street. Not that the street was much of a street. It was a dirt road in those days, 1957. But today, it's Frank Sinatra Drive. Um, and so they have walls up and so on. Today, they have walls up right at the sidewalk and gates to get into the courtyard. And there's the front of the house. And then the back is where the spectacular shows. Anyway, cool, neat, fascinating, wonderful. What I wanted to tell you was they had uh, they, the historian found these historical documents from the architect's uh, archives. They kept the file of the entire build of the house, the original drawings, the original sketches. And I love this stuff. I, I, I'm just a nut for this stuff. And there was a sheet of paper that had been drawn up with a bunch of doodling like numbers and whatnot. And I, I'm, I, I've done this all my career. Um, uh, and the, the numbers on this sheet of paper was the cost of the house. What would the house cost to build, and what would be the budget for the um, for the architect, the engineer, the contractor, and the eventual owner? And I thought, yeah, how much how much would a house in 1957 cost in Rancho Mirage on a golf course with no grocery store within three miles, um, no Costco's, uh, no gas stations? Uh, you had to go to Palm. Springs, that was 12 miles away. Palm Springs is where you had the services. This was out there. This is the country, man. You're out in the desert. $127,000, 1957. <laughs> no, 123,000. 123,000. 123,000, 1957, I believe was the number. And I sat back and I thought about that. And I go, oh my God. Oh my God. This house didn't have air conditioning when it was built. Not, not right away. It would have had air conditioning by 1960, but 57, I'm not sure if they'd had air conditioning available yet. And if so, how unbelievably expensive. The house would have had a full-time caretaker living there. In, in, they had a wing for staff. <laughs> but the house was a bungalow, ranch style, single story, Volta type ceilings, really stylish. But 123000 with a full-time caretaker, you had to take care of it. So when you weren't there, 
when you, the owner, were in, say, in this case, they were in Los Angeles. This particular owner, I believe, was a lawyer. So he had a law practice in Los Angeles. He would get out here on weekends with his wife and kids, perhaps. Um, maybe get out for some winter time, like, like this week, coming up, Thanksgiving week, get away. You'd have to furnish the house. You'd have to maintain the house. You have the landscaping around the house. Pest control. I mean, you're, you're in the desert. <laughs> Just... The logistics of this whole thing, this wasn't a shack. This was a luxurious, phenomenal place that was, these houses were so spectacular, they would make the cover of Life magazine. I mean, these are these were homes that were show-off pieces. And I thought, my God, how much money did you have to have in 1957 to afford a second house, if this was the second house, that could be in the middle of a desert for $123,000 and adjusted for inflation, 1957 to today. Uh, a brand new car in 1957, a family sedan of some kind in 1957, maybe a Bel Air. Um, you, would have, you would have been paying, what, $1,200 for a car, $1,000, $1,500 for a car, where today uh, a, a typical four-door type vehicle, probably now an SUV version, would be what, $35,000, $40,000? We're told now that average cars in the United States are $40,000, $45,000 today. So multiply by 40 to kind of give you a ballpark, $5 million. The house today, $5 million. Now think about this. You are going to build a second home out of town <laughs> where there are not a lot of services, but some schmucks built a golf course in the middle of a desert, uh, two hours from your house, three hours from your house, and you're going to put up a $5 million house, equivalent money, as a home that you might frequent on weekends and during the winter sometime. Dead summer, you would never come out here. The dead of summer, you'd only have your staff out there. You'd have the windows boarded up and, you'd, 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 you know, that house would be closed in and they would just be maintaining to get ready for the next fall and winter and spring. Think about the kind of cash flow, cash flow you have to have to afford to carry, to carry a $5 million house today, plus staff to run it, plus taxes, insurance, maintenance, oh, I, I, I can't imagine. I, I just can't. This is 1957. <laughs> that's what turns me on about history in a way um i love to see these 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 homes that were built way back when by these what i would call pioneers of this area and uh, the kind of money we're talking about and uh, the kind of uh, the kind of people that were attracted here uh to this valley to this area at that time with so little to offer other than a getaway. They were so desperate to get out of greater Los Angeles, the suburbia of LA, get away from the grind. They'd come out here to nowhere, to the middle of nowhere in a luxury unit. And there might be 20 other houses within a couple of miles of you. And about 10 of them are like yours. And slowly but surely more came up. And this is why Hollywood um, actors, and Hollywood executives, they came out here. They knew that when they had their homes built out here, they they had it all. They had everything from home. They had their pool. They had a swimming pool in these places. Uh, so they got the swimming pool. They had the shade. They had they would have their staff with them. You know that they would bring their household staff from L.A. with them to the house in the desert, so that if they had a uh, a full time live in. Uh, uh, domestic in LA, they'd bring that person with them to the house in the desert so that, you know, the sheets would get washed, the laundry would be done, uh, the house would be kept spotless, groceries would always be purchased. In other words, the executive, the, the, the individual, the owner is not running around doing grocery shopping and, and, and looking for uh, tools at the hardware store to fix the a creaky door or something like that. They're out there relaxing because the, their time is precious. The seconds are going by from Friday until Sunday until they got to go back to that office on Monday or, or back in front of the camera if you're an actor or whatever the situation you're in. My God, I find that absolutely fascinating how that uh, world existed uh, because it turns me on. I was born in 1955 and I'm always curious, what was the world like when I was born? 
And how did the well-to-do live when I was born? What was it like for those people who were 50 years old, 45, 50, 55, at the height of their careers, height of their professions, what kind of lifestyle did they have? What kind of world were they into uh, in in the 19, you know, 50 to 65 range when I was just, you know, not even born or barely 10 years of age? Always, I'm always curious of that. And I love watching movies uh, from that era, especially movies like, uh, you know, uh, where people were on ocean liners or uh, they show, uh, you know, high-end Hollywood homes. Oh, but I really love watching these historical uh, recreations of what this was like way back when to just kind of imagine it for yourself. And you had to think about how wealthy above and beyond were they to afford this house because this house did not stretch their budget. <laughs> this house was an add-on to their estate. The value of their estate it was just an add-on. <laughs> so how much, how much was the house in LA? Uh, what, what was that place like? Um, and did they have a place in New York? Did they have an apartment that they kept in New York for doing business there? Did they have a place in London, England? Did they did they travel internationally a lot? Did, did, did you know it was this lawyer an international business dealing type lawyer or just a Hollywood filmmaking type lawyer? I, I don't know. I mean, fascinating stuff. I, I love I love looking into that kind of that kind of uh, dog, that kind of uh, world to kind of get a little peek through the curtain just to see. Wow, <laughs> because we talk about today wealth today. We talk about the wealth of 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 the rich today. And, uh, you know, you see, you'll see, uh, uh, Instagram photos or, or, or photos on the internet. You'll, 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 you'll see clips of the very wealthy and, um, um, things haven't changed. I mean, uh, high end Hollywood actors and actresses make the big money and they live a very comfortable lifestyle. Uh, but there are also thousands of others around them that also do extremely well in that business. Um, the studio owners and the lawyers and the auditors and, 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 and partners and you name it. And then, of course, there's business people and on and on it goes. And, um, yeah, there's super, super wealth out there. And then around here, oh, yeah, there are $20 million homes around here. There are gated communities here that you cannot get in at all. Uh, but if you want to know what it looks like around here, you go to Zillow.com, the online real estate site. And uh, you you type in Palm Desert, California, or Rancho Mirage, and you'll see a, you see an overhead shot of the area. You hit satellite, so you now get satellite imagery of the area. You zoom in, and you find some of the golf courses near the mountains around here. And you'll find Bighorn and a few other these places, and you'll you'll start to see some of these houses that are around here that are tucked away in these little coves and nooks and crannies. And then you can type, you can touch the house with this, your mouse and it'll show you how much the property taxes are every year. <laughs> so you want to get an idea how wealthy you have to be to be able to live in a place like these places. Take a look at the $25,000 a year property tax bill that this guy has. $2,000 a month in property taxes. Forget about the price of the house. Forget about the, the cost of maintaining the house with the staff you need. Uh, forget about the maintenance you have to have and the cost of this thing. Just the city taxes alone. Imagine. I, there are homes here with $30,000 and $40,000 a year property taxes here in this region. And they're being paid on time. Every month the taxes are paid. And if you, you think about it on in your situation, where you live, if you have a $200 a month tax bill, $300, $500, whatever your tax bill is, and then you extrapolate that to $5,000 know, $5, a month, $2,000 a month, $3,000 a month in property taxes on your second house. This isn't a, These aren't primary residents. These homes down here in Indian Wells are not the primary resident. It's the second or third house. And then you think, oh, my God, this is the second or third house? What's the first one? Uh, what's the third or the fourth house? Oh my lord! How much are these folks paying on a monthly basis to maintain this lifestyle? To show you how much money is out there, how much cash flow is out there. Um, so coming back to us. So when I talk to you about uh, writing call options <laughs> and making a few bucks, I come back to saying, look, folks, a lot of you out there. Um, actually do not recognize or realize you have enough assets under your ownership that you could live off of them full time and not have a day job if you don't want one. 
Um, and many of you are shocked when I tell you that, especially those of you who where we do one-on-ones. We'll go over your situation together, and, and I'll figure out with you, you know, your pluses and minuses, where you're at and everything else. And then we, we figure out the possibilities of what you could theoretically do and how you could do this, how you could do that. And many of you do not, you, you don't get it. You, you, you realize quickly within the one hour session we have, oh my God, I actually could become self-employed or I could actually quit my day job. And I could, I could work as a consultant only at my leisure because what I'm making through the market, you know, doing the option writing program and whatnot, this this replaces all that effort, all that sweat, all that stress. My life changes dramatically, and I have more me time. I have me time. I have time for myself, my my wife, my my husband, my kids, my relatives, my health, um, my uh, wishes, hopes, dreams, aspirations. I want to play golf. I want to. I want to ride a bike. I want to go hiking. I want to do photography. I like to paint. You're realizing a life change is at your beck and call if you really want it. And this is where a lot of you have come to me. And, and it's you've stumbled across this old guy who says to you, kids, you don't have to lock yourself into this cage that you're in. Get out of this cubicle and give yourself a life. Um, I'm just looking, I fantasize about the life of 1957, 58, and you know, so on of, of these this region here, because I happen to be here. And I've always been fascinated by the, you know, how the how the other half lives. But you can make your own uh, world uh, the way you want it, if you really want to go after it. And, uh, you know, um, it just takes the want. Do you have the want? to really make this happen. I'll tell you one more story before we finish up there. I, I remember in 1963, 64, my parents, uh, um, uh, myself, my sister, we had, we had just come back from Germany uh, after being, after my father was in the army, Canadian army. He was in the army for over three years and we came, or no, he was in the army for over six years. But after three years of being deployed in Germany, West Germany, came back to Canada. My father had, uh, mom and dad had saved a hundred Canadian dollars a month for three years while in Germany. And they had saved it in their uh, savings account uh, uh, that the army, the, the army had its own sort of savings account. And they had saved up over $3,600 in cash and they were earning interest on this money. And they got back to Canada. Now th th this is a huge amount of money because a brand new house that my father bought his own brand new house. I mean, brand new house, still smell that paint in there. $12,000 was the cost of this brand new house. And he had 3,600 in cash. You only needed a down payment in those days of uh, from the developer. You needed a five hundred dollar down payment, and you could get a mortgage on the house. He had thirty six hundred dollars, um, and they wanted to put a down payment, I think, of two thousand dollars on the house. And the developer was horrified. Why would you put that much money on a house? That's a car. Like hey, you can get two Volkswagens for that. Why would you do that? But um, um, mom and dad wanted a lower, nice low payment, and they had equity, and they wanted the comfort of that, and that's how it went. And uh, they had furniture. Uh, they had they had shipped furniture from Germany over, really good quality stuff that they had bought, bought over there, cash. When they got back, this army man, in those days, being paid in Canadian dollars in West Germany, when the Deutschmark was so low, uh, the Canadian dollar was so high, so was the American dollar. You were very wealthy if you were in the service in those days, way back then. And they came back with, my dad had a phenomenal blow punk stereo that was like, eight feet wide with with uh, beautiful speakers and lux luscious cherry wood exterior uh, lacquered to the max record player radio it was oh didn't have a tv in it unfortunately um and the furniture in the living room that my mom and dad kept for oh gosh 20 years at least and it and it was still brand new when they you know when they turned it over unbelievable anyway um, they bought this this house and um um I remember uh, about the second year in, we were living in the house, and they had they had uh, done all the the sodding, you know, the lawn, and you know, finished all the little touches. The house is beautiful, and we went for a Sunday drive with uh, the mom and dad, and we went to see a thirty-five thousand dollar house, a house brand new for thirty-five thousand dollars. So triple the price of my mom and dad's house. So you know, think about that today. If you're living in a house of worth 
five hundred thousand dollars, you're going to go see one and a half million dollar brand new home. So you know, you know, you're going to see something higher up, right? Well, we went to see this thirty five thousand dollar house, and 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 in my case, I was um, what was I eight? I got it. I understood. You know, we're going to go see this fancy house, and we have to be in our best behavior. I had to wear a suit and tie as an eight year old. My sister had to wear a Sunday dress uh, because my parents would not be draw- would not be caught dead without us being in our finest to go and look at an open house, an open house on a Sunday in our finest finery. And uh, mom wanted to see what a $35,000 house was like. My dad was curious as well. And we had to be on our absolute best behavior and shut the hell up and just walk around with them. My sister held my mom's hand. I held my dad's hand and we did not speak. We were able to look, but do not speak. And you can ask mom and dad questions when you get back to the car. But inside that house, best behavior. Did you remember those days as kids? Oh my gosh, thirty-five thousand dollar house at that time. And my mom and dad thought, "Oh, this is unattainable. This is just unattainable. It is uh, beyond." This is sixty-three, and I'm thinking. Last night, I'm watching this show about Raj Mirage and this house being built in fifty-seven for one hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars in the middle of a desert on a golf course. <laughs> <laughs> four times, four times the money pretty well, just about four times the money. Oh my goodness, how wealthy was that? My father could not imagine being able to have a $35,000 house in 1963. But in 1968, he bought a $33,000 house because of inflation. Inflation took it up, which meant that the $33,000, $35,000 house was now 100, of course, still unattainable. But my dad now had a now, mom and dad had a house in, in Water, Ontario, worth 33000 that they sold for 88000 which meant that that $35,000 house was now $300,000 in, in, when my, their house was 88000 It's all relative, isn't it? Unbelievable. It just, just, just phenomenal, um, phenomenal times. And uh, memories that just come flooding back when you see other things uh, that come to you. Uh, through your through your youth and and what have you and your interest level, what's going to happen today on the markets is what all of you are probably wondering about. Uh, thank you, by the way, to Nate. Uh, thank you, Nate, for this very generous donation. Uh, banked thirteen hundred dollar profit on two hundred thirty five dollar put on GameStop yesterday. Yeah, baby, way to go! Uh, I know that a lot of you obviously are are, are very uh, keenly watching GameStop shares, and um, you've written calls out there. Um, some of you perhaps did some uh, some uh, rollover work uh, in the last week or so, and I'm hoping that uh, that you guys uh, uh, are, are 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 cashing in on some nice profits here. Um, I noticed GameStop right now is 2.15 a share. Uh, we have 18 minutes to go till we open. It's a 2.15 share, up a dollar ten on 19,000 pre-market volume. Dead quiet. Bad news for those of you who think it's going to go up today. Um, uh, this stock cannot go up with that kind of pre-market activity. That 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 is, there's no interest in this stock. There's no like, it dropped from five two fifty two yesterday morning, all the way down two fifteen, and only nineteen thousand traded. This is not going to. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what's going on. Anyway, Nate, th- th- thank you very much for this uh, for this uh, uh, super chat. Th- th- that is really cool, and, and congratulations on making some money. I love it. I love it when you guys make money. Uh, I bought my son a co-op in Chelsea, Manhattan when I retired. It was a steel lottery out of 50,000 applicants. He was one of 1,200 that got it. He pays the mortgage. That is my, uh, that's my second hang hideout. Way to go. Way to go. That's pretty cool. Um, (laughs) Fantastic. Um, Let's see. Uh, Let's see. Uh, (laughs) Um. What else have we got? We have all kinds of neat comments coming through. Thank you, everybody, for making comments and, and being here today. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you, Nice, for this donation, too. Uh, how come you don't recommend us to buy puts, Bruce? Uh, tell me. You know, um, I don't tell you to buy puts. Um, well, basically, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not trying to find you stocks that are dogs. I guess maybe that's my philosophy. Uh, if I recommend that you buy um, Vanek Vectors, SMH, it's not because I think the computer chip industry is going into the toilet. I think it's going the opposite direction, going to the penthouse, and you're going to make money. The buying puts is betting against that. Um, 
But I do tell you to write calls, which is a bearish sentiment. It is a, a form of shorting the market. And I quite happily tell you that if GameStop pops up 20 bucks a share today to 235, I will probably tell you to look at writing $240 calls against it, which is a, a form of shorting the market. You're long the stock, but you're going to be short the, the contract short term to take advantage of a dip or a time depreciation. Um, but I don't tell you to buy a call. Why? Because calls depreciate like call, uh, like call options depreciate. And I'm telling you to buy stock I believe in. So I tell you to buy SoFi uh, stock because I think it can go to 40, 50, 60 bucks a share and 100 and 200 and 300 down the road. Why would I have you buy a put? Uh, uh, now, you can say, well, Bruce, you, we're missing these short-term dips. We're missing these. And I say, no, you're not. You're not missing the dips if you're writing calls. You're not missing them at all. Um, now, I, uh, I admit, Rocket Lab has not hit 20 yet on a sustained basis. So we're not, you're not writing calls at my encouragement on Rocket Lab right now, on ME right now, on, on ATIP, Inspire, all of those, of course, because they have not yet fulfilled their promise to us or to me that I think they are $20 plus stocks sooner or later. Um, but there are methods and you know ways to take advantage of these cheap prices, as you know, buy calls, what have you. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not, that's the short answer, kind of a short answer. Is that a short answer? Um, I hope that made sense. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> uh, I do, I, okay, Rob, you're right. Uh, Rob, I, you got me there. I forgot all about, <laughs> I forgot about one stock in particular, Royal Caribbean. Yeah, Royal Caribbean, I have a, uh, I have a negative bias on. Yes, um, because at $98 a share, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Uh, I mean, I, was I begging you people to buy puts on Royal Caribbean two weeks ago? Now it's 70 something. Oh, unbelievable. And it's only worth 30, 40 bucks. Yeah, I, I agree. There, there you got me on that one. But other than that, on the put front, I tell you to write them. Yeah, I tell you to write puts, uh, cash secured. And otherwise, I tell you to buy calls, go long, long, long. And then I tell you to write, write calls. And that's your, that's your shorting. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, Simpletons. Uh, welcome, uh, all of you. Uh, anyway, it's nice to have you here. Um, <laughs> Rantor, I uh, still no clue about the contracts. I'm sure I can't afford the money either. Hundreds to hundred thousands after the bills, a few hundred. I buy whatever shares I'm here, there, other places. Uh, I've been buying puts for two weeks. I've been shorting our stocks and others for two weeks. Do what you want. I mean, you can do what you want. It's not like it's forbidden and you can't watch me. I mean, do whatever you want. Good morning, Bruce. What do you think about PayPal at 186? I don't. I don't think about it. I have no idea if that's a cheap price, a high price, fair price. No idea where the stock's going. Don't know the company very well. I'm aware of you, PayPal. I use PayPal. I don't know the company. I don't follow them. I don't care. Too busy with what I'm following now. I'm sorry. Uh, I bought GPS yesterday. It let me down a cliff. Um, Nice, uh, Bruce. Here's it. Got it. Rob reminded me about RCL. You can't follow eight. You can't follow eight. Follow eight specs all the time. Sorry. There you go. Um, <laughs> uh, months ago, Bruce uh, Andrea says um, I bought SoFi seventeen fifty call at a five dollar premium, expiring January. Break even point twenty two fifty. Any suggestions? What are your thoughts? Well, um, um, uh, SoFi shares. Uh, could jump three dollars in one day without even any issue whatsoever. In a week, SoFi could go up ten bucks a share. So where are we at now? Seventeen something bucks a share. It could be twenty seven dollars a week from now. Uh, will you be up money? Yeah. Um, were you up money on these shares a little while ago? Yeah. Was I suggesting to a lot of you you might want to consider selling your calls and buying SoFi stock? And starting to write SoFi, starting to write SoFi call contracts. Yeah, did all of you sell your calls, cash in, and do that? No. Am I now getting questions from people who didn't do it and asking me what should I do now? Yeah. <laughs> Andrea, I'm not. I'm not mad at you. Uh, it's okay. I, I love you. It's all right. You're you're into 1750 calls. The stock 1730. The stock could be could be 2730 a week from today. Uh, then again, it might not. 
But um, I like the upside of the stock, and I like the upside of the stock relatively quickly. I like I like the way this thing can pop up very fast at 21, 22, 23, make you a nice buck, and we move on from there. So you want to hang on to this contract? Do so. If you're uncomfortable with the amount of time left on it, look at rolling over into future dates. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not telling you to do any one thing in particular. You still have choices that you can make. Uh, but I like SoFi a lot. And uh, I think there's tremendous upside here. But the exact day, I can't tell you. All right. Uh, let's see. What's going on? Um, uh, let's go. Let's go. Uh, anyway, thank you, everybody, for being here. It's great to see you. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, we're going to be off tomorrow. We're going to be on Friday for half a day. I'm looking forward to that. I'm on tonight, by the way. Tonight, eight o'clock tonight, eight uh, prime time. I'm on the air tonight, prime time, eight o'clock tonight. That's my last show until Friday. So if you want to catch up with us as a members, members only tonight, eight o'clock, come on by, hang out, and you get questions on your accounts, uh, options, uh, portfolios, uh, whatever. We'll 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 try to answer without having to worry about the market. Yeah. Anyway, do it. Do, we'll see what we can do. I love how you try to shoot a straight Uncle Bruce, either an opinion or not. That's no random spec. There's no random speculation. I really, I just, I can't afford to do that. I, why, why bother? Why should I bother with that kind of stuff, right? Why should I guess what's going to happen and then try to guarantee it to you? I mean, ridiculous. Um, there's other YouTubers for that. If you want wild, speculative future predictions, there's all kinds of YouTubers out there you can watch that have a lot more views than I have. I mean, they get the views because they're promising some stuff that, you know, the, the could have, would have, possibly can happen stuff. Oh, incredible. So if you really want to, you know, you want to hang out with some dream merchants, there are some real good ones out there. Uh, they get a lot more views than I do. But um, I don't think they've ever been a stockbroker or, or an investment advisor or ever dealt with a client. <laughs> Do they know what a client actually is? Do they know? Never mind. It's okay. It's fine. Um, anyway, don't forget stink bits, kids. Don't forget to put in stink bits on stocks you love. If you're trying to scoop up a, a share, you know, some stock on, a, on, on one of these companies you really like, um, think about 30 to 50 cents, a dollar or two under the current market, depending on the stock. So, so far, 1729 on the pre market right now, down 52 cents. If you would love to buy some at 17, why don't you put in a bid at 1701? Put in a stink bid. Dare the stock to come to you. You want to get some at 1675? Why don't you put in a bid at 1676? One penny ahead of the nice round number on a stink bid. Dare the stock to come to you. You might get lucky. You might be the low trade of the day. You never know. 1651 is a good bid. 1601 is a great bid. I don't know if you'll get lucky on that. I have no idea. Stout 51 cents on so far in the pre-market. 511,000 shares traded. But to me, I, I kind of think that maybe uh, SoFi is kind of running out of gas. Um, could be that uh, people who wanted out got out. A few stragglers are getting out. Maybe a few folks are being sold out right now by brokers and they have no choice. Could be some margin account selling going on this morning, perhaps. I could be wrong. Um, there might be two or three million trades trade shares trade on SoFi in the first five minutes and then it's all gone and we go from 1720 to 1950 in the next hour and you guys go I should have bought this stuff uh, what was I thinking uh, stink bits uh, you never know okay whatever um let's see um Uncle Bruce, I took your advice post earnings to sell SoFi January 17 and a half calls and buy up shares. Happy with that decision, although I have some averaging down to do. No problem there. The stock never expires. And uh, let's go. Let's go. Um, <laughs> what else is going on here? Um, yeah, ATIP opened two, no loca two new locations. They were right. Uh, they were right when they said they were reaching their year-end goal. Have to open um, more than one a week at this point. There you go. Uh, what else is going on here? Oh, we, where are we at? Six minutes until we open. Okay, six minutes till we open. Um, and uh, let's see. 
Cred Savage says to all you hoarders of stocks, if you're long term, um, stop crying. If you're long term holders of stocks, stop crying. This is our buying opportunity right now. Uncle Bruce tells us always to write calls in the money um, for a reason. Anyone uh, selling SoFi 22 last week is laughing today. Actually, out of the money you know, or, or at the money, out of the money. But yeah, if you were selling, if you wrote uh, SoFi at 22.50 last week or 22s, 24s, 25s, um, anyone selling calls up there were, is real happy now. You betcha for sure. Uh, let's see. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for being here today, hanging around. Uh, catching up with myself. Uh, love it. Um, and let's see. What else is going on here? Um, yeah, apparently SoftBank uh, selling their shares the other day. Uh, they did that last week. That puts them under 10% ownership so they don't have to file um, all kinds of other paperwork with the SEC because anyone that owns more than 10% of a bank your filings are nightmarish, um, so I can see them doing that as well. Uh, they're a foreign entity; they're not American. They did; they want it to be under ten percent. Makes sense to me. I can also see them take some money off the table. They put up a billion bucks uh, when uh, you know when this thing was founded, created, and it wasn't the bank yet. Uh, they've turned it into a nice return, and they're, they're selling some of it. They got half their money out already. Way to go! Uh, I think that's smart investing. I haven't got a problem with that. It's been picked up by all kinds of other institutions. It's all been picked up. Anyway, there you go. Um, thank you all for uh, for uh, being here today and hanging out uh, with us. Um, I'm going to go now, uh, members only, for chat. We're coming into the opening. And um, let's, uh, let's make this happen right here. Here we go, customization. And uh, here we go, members. There we go, members only. It's been done. Please consider becoming a member and join us tonight, 8 o'clock, prime time, uh, for member-only um, prime time with Uncle Bruce. Um, we always have a good time with that show. Love to have you join us and uh, become part of the family there. And, uh, yeah, it would be great. Uh, those of you who want to learn how to write options, check out my lessons on how to do this uh, on my website, uh, stockmarketswithbruce.ca, and head on over there and... Uh, there are 10 lessons for you. Each one is about two hours long. So you got 20 hours of instruction waiting for you over there that you can kind of look over this uh, Thanksgiving long weekend, if you like. Learn how to uh, write call options, put options, uh, spreads, how options work, how they depreciate, um, what does in the money mean, out of the money, um, price depreciation, time time depreciation, shrinkage. Um, we'll learn the George Costanza method, how to make money like George Costanza and shrinkage. Thank you for being here. 665 of you are here. We have 231 thumbs up. So I thank you for the 231 thumbs ups. If you hit the thumbs up button, let me know what number you are. Uh, are you going to be 232 or 233 or 235? Hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what number you are. And, um, and I love you for that. Thank you. Helps the channel. Uh, move higher we're at two 216.89 on gamestop up 299 with two minutes to go before we start trading here very good um let's see uh how about writing a put double d says on uh, sofi february 20 dollar contract uh for to, to bring in 410 what do you what do you think about that Bruce? well that means you're prepared to pay 1590 for sofi um which is a discount from here, a dollar sixty uh, discount from here. About, um, it's not the greatest premium, buck sixty for February. Uh, calls are much higher, uh, but you might want to look at like nineteens or eighteens, um, maybe um, maybe a little more um, lower on the put, and and that way your commitment would be at a lower price. That might that might attract uh, interest. Just a thought. Uh, Nicholas says, you know what? I'm number two forty, buddy. Uh, Double D. I'm number two forty two. How about that? Fantastic, guys. Um, let's see. Um, the Credit Savage says, Uncle Bruce yelled at us to buy the stock a few months ago when SoFi was 13.80. I bought thousands of shares. My average is 15. I wish it drops to 15 again. Stock will fly after the bank charter. There you go. Uh, AB says, I got a feeling it's going to be a positive day. And you might be right. Uh, it could be. Um, the Dow had a good day yesterday. It's down 177 right now. We're about to open. Larry's about to give us the bells here. Um, S&P down 24 and NASDAQ down 126. 
We're down a half a percentage point on the Dow and the S&P, down three quarters of a point on NASDAQ. Oil is off 25 cents to 78.25 right now. And that's the deal. Um, yeah, well, let's see what's uh, what it's all about. Matterport, 2583, down 12 cents. Getting ready to open up there. Uh, SoFi, 1747, down 32 cents. We're talking pennies here. We're not talking dollars, pennies. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, give the market a chance to uh, open up and get going. Um, let's see. Is Larry around today? Um, I don't know if Larry's here or not. Um, but I think we got bells going. Uh, Larry's absent, but DQ has stepped in with the bells. So thank you. Uh, appreciate that. The markets are open. Thank you, Rob. We're up and running. Fabulous. Fabulous. Maybe uh, maybe uh, Larry's traveling today. That's okay. He's allowed to do that. What are we at right now? Early early indications. Have we got anything going on? Rocket Lab down seven cents um, at the moment. Uh, SoFi down thirty eight. Uh, um, GameStop two twenty one up seven sixty six. Matterport down a nickel. ME up nine. Spire up two and a half cents. ATIP unchanged. Smart Rent down forty five. Six Star down thirteen. Some of these quotes might be still from last night. So we're, we'll give the market a little bit of time here to kind of get it going, uh, get it together. The Dow down. Um, 212 to start the day, kind of where it was in the pre-market. We're down 24 on S&P. We're down 114 on NASDAQ at the moment. Uh, Matterport right now, uh, 2595 uh, down a dime at the moment. That's what I'm showing here. Um, Rocket Lab now, 1436 down uh, 19 cents. SoFi down 32. GameStop, 723 higher at 221. We have uh, Matterport at twenty five sixty three down thirty two cents. We've got ME up two cents. Spire unchanged at four sixty five. ATIP unchanged at three forty six. Smart Rent uh, nine thirty seven, but that's last night's close. I don't think we have a quote yet, a price price yet trade. Six Terra, um, yeah, we're trading down thirteen at nine forty three on eight hundred eighty nine shares. Is that is that right? Eight hundred eight hundred eighty nine shares. Yeah. Um, AMC is down 26 points, uh, uh, cents, excuse me. Robinhood down a dime. Vanek down 364. Ra, uh, the Home Depot down $4 to 404. IBM down 35 cents. Dow down 199 now. Microsoft down 240. Now down $3. Apple down 90 cents. Tesla down $33 to 1,076. Bed Bath Beyond down 71 cents. Blackberry down 18. Uh, Royal Caribbean down 64 cents to $78. Uh, Goldman down 279. Um, Cisco up 17 cents to 55.47, recovering back to that 56, 57 neighborhood where it was before their earnings came out. Rocket Lab is now unchanged at 14.55. SoFi down 35. GameStop now holding a $5 gain at 219. Matterport down 14. ME down 7. Spire down 3. Uh, kind of a quiet start. Uh, the Dow is down to 211. Uh, 202 now, 26 drop on the S&P 145 on, on the NASDAQ. All right, let's see what's going on. Um, what is happening? Um, I hit the thumbs up button a while ago, says Glenn. Thank you, Uncle Bruce, for the, uh, for the deep knowledge and insight on some great companies here. SoFi was one of my better trades for 2021. I still have confidence in SoFi and Spire long-term, and you should, and I think you'll be very well rewarded for that. Very well rewarded. I think if you can uh, hang around with these investments, just sit them out, wait, wait them out. They'll come your way. Matterport uh, coming on right now, down only eight pennies, twenty five eighty seven. We were um, twenty five fifty five for the low. We're now twenty five eighty seven, and now we're back to twenty five seventy three. So <laughs> make a liar out of me. One hundred seventy five thousand volume on Matterport as we are jumping just zzz, like this, finding its uh, range. Rocket Lab down 17, SoFi down 41, GameStop up 350, Matterport down 22, ME down a dime, Spire down 8 cents, ATIP unchanged, Smart Rent down 18, Sixterra down 13. Uh, Spire um, will probably be told today or Friday, I don't know about tomorrow, but today or Friday they will find out that the last of the paperwork is done for the acquisition of Exact Earth. Uh, probably Monday morning, um, uh, shareholders of Exact Earth will now be shareholders of ATI, uh, of, um, of Spire, uh, one tenth of a share for every share they had. Uh, and they have a bunch of cash in their account. And now they can decide, 
hey, should I buy Spire at uh, <clears throat> four fifty five a share um, with this two fifty I just got in cash? Um, you know, I can almost buy a half a share of this stuff because it's for two fifty Canadian money. So you know, it's kind of like uh, one seventy five American cash per share. Um, the stock's now down to four fifty five. They have a tenth of a share. It's worth forty five cents. Then they have a dollar seventy five more. So if they they put that into it, they roll that all into Spire stock. Uh, they're putting in two twenty. That's a half a share. So for if they had a thousand shares of of Exact Earth, they could have five hundred shares of of Spire. If they put their money into the Spire stock down here, and um, I have a feeling a bunch of them are going to do that. I I really believe that a bunch of um, followers and loyalists over at um, Exact Earth are going to try to scoop up Spire stock, and why not? It's at its all time low. The company is cash rich nailing down contracts like exact earth is nailing down contracts the exact earth company is expanding dramatically the two together will be a powerhouse machine um and spire is going to acquire other companies so spire is going to get bigger more profitable more cash flow more contracts more more work um and so this 450 something price is a joke i can see where Exact Earth shareholders will just pump their money into Spire and buy it up to like six bucks, seven bucks. They won't even think twice of paying seven for it. They'll buy it up because they're going to buy it for the next five years because they know what I what I suspect is going to happen. This is a fifty dollar stock in five years, and they want in at four fifty nine, four sixty five bucks, six bucks, seven bucks. They'll buy it, no question about it. But they they know that they know the story. They know the the big picture for this company. The market does not know the big picture for this stock and company because there are 678 people watching me right now, live, right now, this minute. And if every one of you told 10 friends all about Spire, that would only still be 6,700 people that would know. Out of the 400 million that trade the market every day, I mean, the stock is not known by them yet sooner or later they'll know uh they'll hear about it but it, it could be days weeks months years but by the time they know those those 400 million they are they all know you're the one selling them stock at 50 60 bucks a share so they can get in because by the time they figure it out it's over it's long long gone. so welcome to the ground floor of investing opportunity here atip 344 down two pennies, another ground floor scenario. Rocket Lab now 1420, down 35 cents. SoFi now up 17 cents to 1798. SoFi today hit a low of 1735. It's now 1798, up 17 cents on 2.3 million shares. Oh, it's $18. SoFi is $18. Um, I kind of mentioned a little while ago that it's possible that we might open up with a couple of million shares in the first few minutes on the last flush out of sellouts, 1806, and then it would dry up. There would be nothing for sale. There would be a gap. Did any of you get any stock at 1736, 1751? Uh, did any of you get stock at 1741? Any, any stink bid hitters here? Uh, 1797 now. On 2.3 million. So yeah, so if I could have an up day today, we could easily reach $20 today. It would be a nothing burger for SoFi to be at $20 today. But you've just got to stick around and hang around for it. That's the have you got the patience? Can you pull a Warren Buffett? He's been doing it for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. Can you wait around a couple of months? <laughs> are you busy? Uh, like are you? Do you have like an extended trip on a yacht somewhere you got to go on to? Or do you have to go to the Himalayas for a couple of months? You're going to be out of touch for a while? Or are you around? Uh, can you hang around for a little while? Let these stocks make you money? Like Matterport, up 22 cents right now. Can you hang around for that? 26.10 on Matterport. The low of the day, 25.30. We're now 26.10. We're up 80 cents in two minutes. Can you... Can you give the stock a couple of days to kind of sort itself out? Um, or are you that, not that patient? I, I don't know. Um, you know, teasing you, you know. I'm teasing you. I'm testing you guys. Uh, 23 me down a quarter. Uh, Spire down a dime. ATIP down a penny. 
Smart rent down 17, six narrow down a dime. I can handle losses of dimes and tens and 20 cents losses. No problem. No problem at all. You want to give me four days down 17 cents a day? Fine. Go, go ahead. Because one day, we'll go up three bucks in one day. That'll wipe all that out. And then we're up two bucks on this whole thing. Yeah, I can handle that. I, I'll wait for it. Yeah, I'm going to be, I, I wasn't doing anything. Um, I'm not, I'm not on like Broadway on a, uh, doing a play for the next three months. I'll be here. Uh, we'll, we'll stick around. Okay. GameStop down to buck ninety five, two eleven ninety five on GameStop. GameStop did the opposite this morning. It had that dead cat bounce to start the morning, <clears throat> popped up to uh, two twenty three ninety nine, <clears throat> and now it's uh, two eleven, two thirteen, two eleven, and uh, and we're two hundred fifty eight thousand shares. No volume. We're going down. Um, we need volume to have it go higher. Yes, earnings come out next week. Yes, they do. Will that make GameStop go higher? Um, what am I expecting from earnings? I am not expecting. I'll tell you what I'm not expecting from GameStop. <clears throat> I am not expecting them to tell us that their sales are up 50%. I'm not expecting GameStop to tell us they broke even in the last quarter. I'm not expecting them to tell us that they're going to make money next quarter on, a, on another surge of income. I'm not expecting it. I would love to hear it, but I'm not expecting it. Um, I think that the build out continues. Uh, these uh, these uh, facilities, uh, the you know, one in York, Pennsylvania, the one in Reno, they're getting them done, they're getting them fired up, and then they're hiring all kinds of people in the software area to eventually launch something in the NFT, who knows what business. But um, I'm not expecting anything, you know, unreal. And now, I really hope I'm wrong. I really am hoping that I'm surprised as all get up next week. That GameStop comes up with some unbelievable news. I, I would love that. But the mo the volume right now, with only uh, like less than a week to go before they talk, it's crappy. Uh, or like a week or two before they talk. It, it's really not good. So uh, I'm not getting any pre-earnings buzz yet. Uh, we're, we're now 214 again, up 89 cents. So, you know, that's a, it's better. The Dow is uh, down 153, S&P down 24, NASDAQ down 146. So as far as GameStop goes, writing options is the way to go to make money. Uh, SoFi, $18. Matterport, $26.32, up 37 cents. Um, ME down 17, Spire down 11, ATIP down 2, Smart Rent down a dime, Sixtera down a dime. Um, what else is happening? Uh, well... Negative all over the place. A Royal Caribbean down a buck now, 95 cents down, 77.89 on Royal Caribbean <clears throat> going lower. Um, Goldman Sachs down a buck 90, not giving up ground here very much. Um, interesting. And on Cisco up 28 to 55.58. There you go. Uh, very good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, through selling cover calls, I have my average on SoFi to 14, so I'm okay with the dip, but miss seeing the big green number now, a smaller green number. Uh, GameStop's going crazy, says Deep Value Investing. Um, really? It's a 212. Uh, anyway, there you go. There you go. Um, oh, I forgot I had a stink offer for GameStop 235 on Friday for 585. I filled it. Should have gone higher. Uh, also sold 10 SoFi March 20 puts for 375 and 450 premiums when I hit 19, 17, 8. It's all good. Um, I'm just waiting for some Matterport to drop to 22 again to buy more shares and buy back a few $25 contracts I wrote a week ago. Green or red, no matter. Uncle Bruce has shown how to make money. Uh, Matterport, 26.50, up 55 cents right now. It's doing okay. Um, let's go, um, Uncle Bruce. I just made 305 minutes on a 235 GameStop for Friday. I stink offered at 585 and I just bought it back on the stink bid for 285. Did I do this right? I, I think you're doing it right. Yeah, you do that all day long. Uh, you betcha, babe. Do it all day long. I love it. Bought more Spire at 455. Spire execs must be throwing their hands in the air wondering why the face they need to do and not get these joke prices. Um, let's see. SoFi coming on. Uh, we're green on SoFi. Um, let's see. Um, what else is going on here? Uh yeah, you know, the funny thing is, is that literally a week and a half ago, people were elated and taking gains from SoFi. This is how the market is. Ups and downs, not everyone has the stomach for it. It's true. 
Uh, that's true. Um, you know, my my six cents SoFi nineteen dollar calls print. It's going to be a great Christmas. Uh, wouldn't that be great if SoFi took a shot for you? Wouldn't that be great? Uh, go to twenty bucks. That'd be super. Uh, let's see. Uh huh. Uh -uh. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I just did a stink bid. Two bucks a share under the price they took it. Oh, nice. Nice. Um, stink bids, man. You can make a lot of money on stink bids. Uh, and just like that, SoFi is up 50 cents in seconds. Cry baby is going to stop whining now. Thank God someone tell these babies time in the market will always be timing the market. Credit Savage is kind of all riled up today, don't you think? Uh, that's all right. Um, yeah, here, uh, Rob, uh, hey, take a walk, Credit Savage. You're, you're all riled up here, man. Uh, it's okay. Uh, it's all right. We'll be fine. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, yep, it goes up and down, down and up. Uh, but for some reason, some crying babies have no concept of this, and they kept crying to Uncle Bruce about their 30 shares dropping in value instead of having patience. Ah, oh, Credit Savage having a tough day this morning. <laughs> uh, okay what else is going on um well, yeah 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 um i guess the bottom line is on sofa i fired off another 20 dollar put january 23rd for 690 i sold it and i got it nice nice going uh thank you from uh, tax down thank you from tax down for that donation on paypal thank you Beautiful. I love it when you guys make money or share the wealth. I love it. Um, thank you, guys. Okay. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Um, GameStop, 210.48, down 3.42. Um, uh, Matterport, up 65 cents to 26.60. 17.98, SoFi, up 17 cents. Rocket Lab, only down 4 cents. 14.51, it's coming on right now, fast. ME down a quarter, Spire down 12. Oh, ATIP up a penny, uh, Smart Rent down 14, Sextero down 10. We got a couple of greenies, a couple of green bars, and we're watching Rocket Lab down 4 cents. Might go green as well. The Dow down 162, S&P down 30, NASDAQ down 182. Okay. There's the dealio, kids. Um, 209 on GameStop down 465, Okay. Um, any of you who write contracts on GameStop, watch for that. Um, mm, 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 mm. Credits are still going at it. People just blame Uncle Bruce on here for the market going down, and it bothers me, man. Uncle Bruce is legit. A person trying to help us and bashing him is out of line. Well, I thank you for that. I appreciate that. I, 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 I'll be all right. It's it's okay. I, I, I can take it. I can, I can handle it. They're being so mean sometimes. I can take it. I go cry in the corner. Um... <laughs> oh boy uh what else is going on here um gamestop earnings calls have now set a bad precedent if ryan spoke at all he would send the stock higher just because of the change i hear ya i hear ya um yep 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 i was just wondering you know should i take phone calls on this live show should i should i set up an 800 number and take live phone calls from any of you guys Maybe I should charge like, I don't know, 25 bucks to take a call or something like that. You know, it, it's a money grab. <laughs> you know, would that really upset you uh, if I did that? I, I'm, just, I'm just curious. Should I, should I take phone calls uh, live on the air? I'm not sure if I can do that. I have to be careful with the lingo, you know, because some of you guys get riled up, you know. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious about that. Paul says, yes. Um, one ninety nine a minute, says Swiss Butter. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. The trolls will come out in full force. Um, you'll be glad you didn't in time. Um, I'll put in a stink bit of 2501 on the phone call with Uncle Bruce. I'd advise against it. Um Phone calls, yes. Charging, heck no. Do it for free. Um, <laughs> live phone calls will be awesome. Lots of trolling through, but it's cash. Uh, but only if you put the speaker on, uh, put them on the speaker so we can hear their voice. Um, let's see. Um, any more? Any more thoughts on taking phone calls? Um, 
That'd be funny. That troll could just yell at you instead of paying two thousand a day for all his membership. For all his membership. That's a great idea. Phone calls like Art Bell, West of the Rockies, Wild Carl line, etc. You may want to take a few seconds to screen callers, weed out the trolls. <laughs> Credit Savage, Uncle Bruce, going to cry all the way to Japan to have a meet and greet in Italy and Japan and get paid to do so, and that's all up to us. Make it happen. Let's go. Uncle Bruce, what if someone pays $250 to call you full-time and talk about life? <laughs> You're going to need to hire a call screener. Um, maybe do a test call-in show on Wednesday night. Remember, only show first. Uh, take like one or two calls per session. Um, we could ask about Howard Stern's body parts. <laughs> that could be fun. Oh my goodness! SoFi eighteen dollars up nineteen cents. Rocket Lab up a nickel fourteen sixty. Matterport up eighty seven cents to twenty six eighty two. GameStop two ten down three eighty nine. Um, Ninety nine cents a minute. A lot of people like me will never call in because we're already sneak trading and listening to while working from nine to five. <laughs> Only phone calls from people eating. That's the only. That's the only way. Um, I'll call and just play Yoko over the phone if I call you, man. Oh gosh, uh, <laughs> I love that Beach Boy. Only people eating. <laughs> oh no, bro, uh, God no, Beach Boy. One's enough. Uh, watching Uncle Bruce eat is bad enough. <laughs> Oh man, oh man. Uh we're up a dime on Rocket Lab, uh 1465. We're up 18 on SoFi, 1798. Still down three on GameStop. We're up 119 on Matterport, 2714. We're going higher on Matterport. Down eight on ME. We're coming back on ME. We're down 13 on Spire. ATIP up two and a half cents. Smart rent down nine. Six Terra down ten. Hey, market's getting better. You know, that would be a, an interesting idea during the pre and after market hour you cover in the show. Then we hear new voices like on the radio. Um, nice says a five dollar donation here. Credit coach using all his credit needs to relax. <laughs> Thank you, nice for the donation. Matterport, let's go, says Jennifer. Uh, are are any short calls on SoFi for like two three weeks out with break even eighteen any good or never do them no matter what. Never do them no matter what. How about that? Oh boy, Rob, just wait a few minutes and call just in case. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh man oh man uh would you hold off writing sofi calls looking to write february 22 20 dollars sofi calls right now the range is 2 to 210 a contract what do you think bruce well the stock's at uh, pushing 18 so if the shares can move up a dollar today to 19 you, you might get 240 250 for those you might want to hold up um you may want to just write a, a two dollar uh, 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 sorry a january twenty dollar instead of a february for two bucks and get 30 days closer that might be better off or or more i don't know if you can get more chewing voices uh, says a uh, peach boy chewing voices um <laughs> you do enough sean and wendy say thanks for the wednesday nights uh think i think live calls will take up all of your time let us know what you decide we all hope you have your energy at 66 um spire alert under 450 this is 450 right there yeah it's at 450 1464 on rocket lab up nine 1802 on sofi 211 on gamestop 2740 up 145 on matterport get ready to write 30s um atip 350 um up four and a half cents good luck uh, bill says dq they refunded my 70 dollars says bill they I, they wouldn't put my deal through oh too bad Come on, SoFi, pick home. You know an under $20 price is beneath you. Get up there and out of the junk price right now. Credit Savage, uh, thanks, Bruce. Uh, th thanks, Credit Savage, for this. Uh, thank you for making red days in the market fun and bearable. I have a different approach now to investing, thanks to you. Also, the lamp is crooked. I don't know what you're talking about. There is no lamp here. I don't know what you're referring to. Credit, you're just all riled up, you know. You got Maybe if you sat watching me like this or like this, it wouldn't look so bad. I don't know what you're talking about, though. $18 on SoFi, up 19 cents. $14.58 on Rocket Lab, up three. We're down $2.69 on GameStop. Matterport up a buck fifty. $27.45, baby. 
Um, you know what's funny is that is that none of you are talking about writing contracts on Rock, uh, on Matterport this week, and we're at twenty seven dollars a share. Um, it's amazing. Uh, Thirty dollar contracts might be in the wheelhouse coming up here. Down a nickel on ME, down eighteen on Spire, up four and a half on ATIP. Smart Rent unchanged. Spa, uh, Sextera down a dime. So we're getting greens coming here. We're getting some green symbols. Green bars are starting to show up. Uh, there you go. If there wasn't a general malaise, Rocket Lab would be over 20 right now. Boo. I put a stake bin into 449 on that spire. I'm trying to steal that spire. 448, you got it. You got hit. Now you can get in there at 446, 441. Steal this stuff. We're up six cents on ATIP. We're up seven on ATIP. 353. How about that? Oh, wow. What can I say? Uh, I'm so far, it's going to sneak past 18 today. It is. It, it's going to do that. Uh, I'm going to buy Clubrus a level for the lampshade. What? What lampshade? What? What do you? What do you talk? There's no lamp here. Uh, is there any advantage of writing two or three calls to recover a rolled call loss over two months versus rolling a call for a duration of two months to recoup losses? Huh? <laughs> what? Uh, advantage of writing two or three calls to recover a rolled call loss over two months. Versus rolling call for Oh, I see. So you're thinking about instead of writing a long term call at a big fat premium and get all that money back in one shot and just sit there, is it better off to just keep writing short terms? Keep writing the short terms. You can do either. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. But I, I look at it from a cash flow perspective and I'm thinking, hey, if you wrote GameStop 210 calls and it went to 230, and you bought them back and wrote 240 calls and it went to 250 and you bought them back and wrote 260 calls and then the stock goes down to 210 like it's done uh you're buying back that 260 call for super 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 cheap and you got all your money back you got all you got profits look what rob did yesterday on his rollovers uh, he had to roll over from 210 to 230 it went to 252 on him and he still made money when it backed off and now he's writing and making money all over again so the other thing I like to do is if you write a 260, 250, a 240, the stock backs off. You start buying back those 250s and write 230s, same time frame. You're, you're just buying back a cheap call, writing a more expensive call closer to the money. Stock goes down again, buy back the 230 at less, buy a 220 for more. And you could then theoretically take a look at buying back your call for January next year and now writing a call for April uh you know something closer like like coming in you could think about that idea just all kinds of ways to do this all right lamp is perfect leave it alone there's no lamp there's no lamp ah there's no lamp and we're filled at 4.49 there you go <laughs> the GameStop 230 call I wrote yesterday for this Friday is looking great uh yeah we're at 210.98 and it's a 230 call with one and a half days of life left in it. It's got to be looking good. It's just got to be looking good. Matterport, 27.25, up a buck, 24. We're looking good on Matterport now. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we got to like this. Uh, GameStop, 210.98 is the price of the stock. 211 now. And uh, <laughs> 230 call you wrote uh, uh, for this Friday, a 230 right now 275 to 330 is my quote and it could be it'll definitely go lower than that isn't that something yeah it's going to zero there's a force in the universe that makes things happen he quipped and all you have to do is get in touch with this stop thinking let things happen and be the lamp <laughs> oh man the lamp is for toasting bagels uh swiss butter bruce needs a lamp for from a, a christmas story no i don't i'm traveling in a briefcase i don't need it I wrote four 30 Matterport calls expiring 1217 for 165. I wish I waited a little. Well, you know, you're taking in money. Um, just in time for the holidays. A gift, gift that keeps on giving. Spire, spire. Um, a speech boy. I have toasted toasted bread on hot plate of a coffee maker. Um, yeah, 210. Rob says 210 to 230 to 250. Then I dipped and I got out. By the way, Bruce, nicely done. Nicely done, Rob. You're, you're on top of this. This is good stuff. I'm going to give the kids a thousand spire shares for Christmas. I'm trying to move the market. Uh, let's see if Matterport deflates back to the red by midday. It's been doing that lately. 
Well, you never know. You know, Matterport up 139, 2734. Down four bucks, 430 on GameStop, 209.60. SoFi, 1805, up 24 cents. Unchanged on Rocket Lab. ME unchanged, 830, 883 now, unchanged. Spire, 450, uh, down 14 cents. So ATIP up three cents to 349. Smart rent up three cents to nine forty. We have some green bars. Six terras only down four cents. Even six terras getting better. Oh my gosh, what is going to happen here? Oh, so exciting, so exciting. Well, you know, one trade, one day at a time. Uh, Smith's it's pronounced Smith's Swiss Buddha, B Buddha. No one ever needs the lamp from A Christmas Story. Uh, those things are everywhere now. No one needs those. <laughs> They, they be all over the place. Um, let's see. Uh, what can we say? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, we're down 166 on the Dow. 23 on a NASDAQ. No, no, 23 on S&P and NASDAQ down 1, 2, 3. I sold another $40 call on Matterport for January for a buck 40. Nice, nice, nice. Scott Brewer, thank you for this donation, Scott. 20 bucks. Uh, I'm buying you a pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving. My outlook on the future has brightened since following this channel. My family is grateful for what you do. Thank you so very much, Scott. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you guys are great. I love you guys. Uh, if you write a covered call, George is asking here, and the stock drops, why not just hold the covered call and wait for the expiration? I mean, if you buy it back and write a lower covered call, you get money, but the strike price is now lower too. These are very good questions. Well, you know, if a stock goes from, you know, 200 to 210, to 210 to 240, 230, 40 to 250, that's a bit of a run, a little too much maybe. And you've, you've written a 250 call and then you, 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 it backs off to 230, the stock. You buy back the 250 and write a 240 and the stock backs off to 210. You buy back the 240, write a 220 in the back. You can make money that way too. You can also, like I say, um, you write the 250, 60 call way out there. Like you you are taking in a fat $50 premium, a $40 premium, a fat one. And uh, if the, 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 the contract drops by $15 a share, 20 bucks a share, you, you roll back, you know, to 240, to 230, to bringing in more money each time. Each time, still staying way out there, you can play that game. Um, take in the money. The stock is giving you the money. You're, it's, it's rent. You're collecting rent on the stock. You're the landlord. The, the stock is parking in your parking spot. You're charging it money. Get paid to park that stock over there. I think that's a good way to go. Anyway, that's just me. You know, I'm too scared to write a game uh, with just a single day uh, run up. Hey, Flesh, I get you, Flesh. It's okay. I mean, you don't have to write calls, but, uh, you know. 2758 up 163 it's a good day um if you get a nice price for the 30s great but otherwise hey no big deal up to you 210 on gamestop down three so far 1808 up 27 cents uh me down two spire down 16 atip up three and a half smart rent up a dime six terra down four there's where we're at right now rocket lab up seven 1462 okay mm. Yeah, what what happens to a stock when a what happens to a company when a stock has wild swings, like like Spire? Do they even care? Does it matter to them? N nothing changes as far as business goes. I mean, satellites orbit the Earth and they have to be managed. Nothing changes. The checks come in from those who need satellites managed. <clears throat> the company continues to negotiate new contracts and continues to to build their business. They continue to look for companies to take over. And they've got cash to buy, so they can do cash buys. Um, it's possible that Spire might buy some privately run companies in the satellite area to turn them into public companies by an acquisition. It might be that an analyst um, out of the blue will notice Spire's activities and say, hey, uh, I just noticed something. Uh, th this company is cash flow positive, uh, EBITDA is positive. They're signing contracts with NASA, the European Space Agency. They're buying up companies. They got hundreds of millions of cash in the bank. This thing should be 20 bucks a share. And they casually mention that in an article. And it goes viral on Reddit 
and everywhere else. And the next thing you know, your stock's trading at 12, 14, 15 bucks, and you're going, Bruce, you're a genius. Uh, and I go, thank you. I appreciate that because it was all me. It's all me. Uh, there you go. That's just what I'm saying. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Flesh, I'm about to write a Matterport cover call. Um, Matterport takes a bit to go down and then moves up so violently. Uncle Bruce, is that the stock not being available or just whales buying up so much stock at once? There's a lot of day trader speculators on this too, you know. Um, they've seen it go to 3080 already. They know there are predictions to go 35. So they feel there's eight, nine dollars upside here still. And they figure when the shares break 30, 31, 32, 33, that there'll be more 35 and maybe $40 calls by analysts. So they're thinking 2772 up 176 is still a bargoon. That's what they're thinking. But you can write $30 calls in the meantime and take some money for December. GameStop, two fourteen eighty six up 96 cents. Zzz, just popped up. SoFi, $18. Rocket Lab up 12 cents to fourteen sixty eight. ME went positive again, up 6 cents to eight eighty eight. dollars uh, Spire down only 12 and a half cents. And ATIP up three. There you go. Anyway, there it is. There it is. There it is. Um, yeah, I think Matterport has room to run, but I'm pretty greedy. Oh, there you go. Um, we just saw Matterport in the low 30s not long ago, but 40 seems safe. I just feel I could get more, uh, you know, premium. And why not? Why not? What's wrong with that? Um, you know what, Uncle Bruce? I just started substitute teaching and have missed several days. What's the short version of SoFi's dip? Oh, you've missed several days here. Uh, well, uh, SoFi was, what, 22, 24 a uh, week and a bit ago? Um, they came out with some filings, uh, which they do on you know, after their third quarter financials came out, now they're doing their third quarter filings and people are reading in between the lines. Like there's a conspiracy theory that this stock, it's all over. <laughs> there's going to be a whole bunch of stocks sold from the treasury. It's all over. It's not, that's not true. Uh, the stock took a dip, a little profit taking came in. Yep. Uh, oversold. Yeah. Um, some people got wiped out on margin calls. Yeah. And we're at 1798 back to 18 bucks and we're climbing again today. And uh, we could go back to 24 in no time. Yeah. So I, I like it. Yeah, I do. Uh, 214 on GameStop. Matterport 2754 up 159. ME up 7. Uh, ATIP up 3.5. Let's go. You can take a 70 cent premium for a December 17 expiry or 140 for a January 21 expiry. Why wouldn't you take the closer one? Matterport $40 strike. Well, there's that too. You could take the 70 cents, the $70 a contract. But, you know, it's up to you. You want to write 35s for December 17, you know, defy the stock and say, hey, you're 27. I'm going to write 35s for December. Come and get me. I, mean, I, dare, I dare you. I double dare you. That's how confident I am that you're not going to take me out because you know one thing. You can roll over to 40s if you had to. So why not? Or write 30s. And how about that? Or, well, you know what you could do also. You could write 25s in the money. You could say, you know what, I'm writing in the money 25s for December because I think between now and December, there'll be more profit taking on Matterport and it might go from 2763 back to 2450 and then back up to 35. And I think on that dip, I'll buy these contracts back that I'm going to take in big money on. Maybe that's what I'll do. Like, for example, a $25 call for December is right now 360 to $4. And you're thinking, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll buy them back at two. Yeah, I'll buy into it. Look, uh, the, the, the $4, if I get $4 uh, a contract, I, I'm selling at $29. It's only a $27.40. I could play that game. Or the 30s are 2 to 2.10 for December 17. They're now three and a half weeks away from expiry. Not a bad deal. Uh, 35s are 105, 120. 40s are 55, 75. 45s are 40 to 55. So you can always do rollovers all the way up to 40, 45s for future months if you need to, of course. January 25s, you want to write those? 480 to 540. How about taking in like 535 for a $25 contract? And if the stock backs off to 2450, they're out of the money. Uh, these could drop back to like three bucks, 275. You can make 50% in your money. You could do that. 30s are three to 340. You could write, write in for 335. That'd be a good premium for 30. 35s are 195 to 220. You know, get 215 for them. That's a good premium. Anyway, there's thoughts, yeah, hopes, wishes, dreams, aspirations. Why not? Um, okay, it's all good. Uh, we're down 124 in a Dow, a little better than before. 
We're down 15 on S&P. We're down 88 on NASDAQ. A little improvement on the market. It's nothing great, but it looks better. It is looking better. ME kind of jumping around the ME break-even line right now. GameStop, 215 up a buck 50. Buck 58 on GameStop. A little jumping around here. Uh, you know, you can write contracts that die tomorrow on GameStop. Uh, you can write contracts like, uh, or die Friday. You could write like 220s on GameStop, and you could then, uh, you know, uh, look to buy back if the stock uh, doesn't go over 220 or drops a little, little bit later today. 220s will get you 375 to 445. You can put a stink offer in there at 440, get taken out on 220s on GameStop, and if you don't buy them back, you keep all of it for the next two days. Tomorrow we don't trade. Uh, there's that. Uh, games, you want to write 215s? We're at 214 right now. 215s uh, bringing in 580. How about writing for 575, a 515, a 215? Stock goes to 209. Later this afternoon, you might buy these back for $3, 275. Wait till Friday. And it's a half a day. Uh, in the morning, they might open up at 275, go down to 75 cents, back up to $3, depending on the stock. But, you know, up to you. Uh, two, 220s, 220s, 250s, 225s can be written for 345 if you can uh, get that offer. 345 for a 225 dying Friday. There's some potential there, um, definitely potential there. Okay. Are we having fun yet? I, I'm having fun. Hope you're having fun. Uh, let's see. Um, mm -mm, mm -mm. Business with satellites continues always. SoFi over 4 million volume always. 17.99 on SoFi. 214.90 GameStop. Matterport 27.33 up 138. ATIP up three and a half cents. Um, you know, you write your contract for a nice premium and you put in a stink bid right away for half price and just leave it there. You never know in 15 minutes hour and 10 minutes, two hours, 15 minutes, you get hit. And you got you made your money today. Thank you. Anyway, there you go. You know, it's funny. If Spire goes up over five, I'm going to throw a party. There you go. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Pure green on SoFi today. How about that? Uh, you know, I've been following you, Uncle Bruce, says Andrew, uh, ever since the stocks we follow were SPACs. Have you found any new ones worth investing in? Nope, I haven't. Uh, I want more companies to get in on the ground floor. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I do too. But um, I haven't found a SPAC that turns me on um, with pipe financing, um, real upside, and with the SEC leaving them alone. I'm not quite convinced that this is the time to be looking for new SPACs right now. I figure I'll I'll follow the ones that, that used to be SPACs. We know these guys. And uh, let's just work with these guys because these guys can make us all kinds of money. Just saying. Uh, okay. Mm, what else is going on here? Um, GameStop is nuts. Uh, Bertie, thank you, Uncle uh, Uncle Al Alvies. Why? Uh, just why? I'm getting a tattoo that says, To Bruce. T.O. Bruce taught me. Uncle Bruce taught me covered calls. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. Uh, how's that old American Airlines stock doing? Let me take a look here. What's American Airlines doing right now? Um, where is it? Oh, there it is. Uh, 1932 down 14 cents. Not doing anything. How's that Boeing doing? Uh, 209.55. It's only up 42 cents. Boy, can you make money writing calls on those? Oh. Easy money. Hi, Jen. Easy money. Easy money. Taking candy for the baby. Candy for the baby. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Rob is saying 220s might be a bit close with the big jumps we're seeing. It's more aggressive for sure. Well, you know, you know, Rob, there you go. Even 230s are 320, 45. There you go, Rob. There's opportunity knocks. Uh, happy, uh, anti happy, uh, and uh, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving from Bertie. Oh, yes. um, happy Thanksgiving, sweet birdie. Uh, GameStop showing some volume finally. Uh, really, a uh, GameStop volume uh, five hundred seventy-eight thousand. I don't think so. Uh, it, it ain't nothing. That's a nothing burger there. Two thirteen on GameStop down thirty cents. Mm 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 mm. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, good morning, Jen from Rob. Good hey Rob, morning. there you go. Uh, yeah, a B A and uh, American Airlines covered calls. <laughs> yeah, baby. Well done. Um, how you doing? Good. Did you sleep good? Well, no, I had a hard sleep last night. I, I didn't. I didn't. It didn't start well for me. Yeah, it didn't uh, start well for me until about ooh three. <laughs> yikes! I went to bed early, and and then in the first forty five minutes, it was all right. Then it wasn't so good. And then I was tossing and turning, and 
Yeah, we were that dancing I, and turning I was in and out. And, it sounds like a song. You know. In and out. In and out. In and out. <laughs> what is it? Mommy don't know. Mommy's got a squeeze box. Oh, that was, there was that one. Daddy yeah. doesn't sleep at night. Daddy doesn't sleep. Mama's got a squeeze box and daddy don't sleep at night. That's true. What uh, are you talking about, honey? Uh, accordion lessons. Oh, okay. uh, talking about paying for accordion lessons accordion on the, and the racket great. that it makes. Um, yes. You know, you play an accordion on a squeaky bed. Uh, it's oh, just awful. It's uh, awful. <laughs> you play some of those polkas and you're jumping up and down on a squeaky bed with an accordion. You can't get any sleep. I mean, the neighbors next door are going, what was that the accordion playing over there? I mean... What is with all that? And and why are all those kids running around that house? Where are all those kids come from? Where do where those kids come from? Uh, what, what's with that? There used to be a couple there. Now there's a couple of six kids. What's going on? And that accordion music and all that squeaking on the bed. What, what is that? Why would you play an accordion on a squeaky bed? Makes no sense. Makes no sense. I, I don't understand. Banished to their bedroom, obviously. That's what it was. Yeah. You're grounded. <laughs> and all you can do is practice accordion. Practice your organ. <laughs> your organ playing. Yikes. Ah. <laughs> what would you so, like this morning? I'm thinking. He's thinking. A toasted bagel. Yeah. With melted cheddar cheese on oh. it. Oh. Cheddar cheese slices. See, now I'm going to have to start being like Kreskin and I'll write the answer down and give it to you and see how often we match. Because that's what I thought it was going to be. That's what she thought it was going to be. Uh, we didn't talk about it free before. No, it was no. the first time we've seen each other all morning. See, that's how it works, man. Uh, okay, yeah, well. Okay. I'll big day it. Friday. Big day Friday. Big day Friday. Someone's coming down here on big Friday. Big day tomorrow. I, I know, um, boy, we're getting busy. We're getting busy here. Lots of people, lots there's, of kids, lots of family. There are lots of folks in town for Thanksgiving. And yeah. Just, yeah. it's not worth your life to go to a grocery store oh my god it, it, it no. it's the albertsons no. is busy the costcos are busy it's nuts it's time. busy right now yeah. yeah we went we went costco shopping yesterday and, and uh, we went there to get one thing and we walked <laughs> out of there with 10 things well we could use this we could use this we should buy this now why don't we buy this now and that's the problem of having yeah. all those people there because you're walking slower slower you have a chance to look look around, at items more do a little impulse buying yep that's right that's right yeah oh by the way on the meet and greet uh i think we're almost sold out like we're down to maybe five spots yeah we're just about done um uh we might be done by tomorrow we're gonna, or friday we're gonna we're gonna cut it off yeah we're gonna cut it off uh we will not like uh, in the next 24 hours we won't accept any more um people to the meet and greet we'll, we'll be maxed out um just, uh, yeah. otherwise it just it's too big well it gets to the point where where um we can't meet everybody for 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 me to spend 10 minutes with each person just uh, just a, a casual chat uh it's gonna be all day <laughs> can't be done uh too many hours of time would be you know yeah but with with the group we've got it's intimate and it allows me to talk to you know half of you here half of you there a third of you here you know, um with one-on-one -on -one, you know get togethers um but it, it's going to be it's going to be something we're we're we'll make we're, sure you look pretty yeah i'll shave i'll, I'll shower and shave before we go. go uh J jen won't let me out of the house you get back there you get yourself cleaned up okay Brush your hair. you put on your sunday fest i'm not putting on a suit and tie though not putting on a suit and tie you don't want to have a suit and tie no no you're fancy going to church shoes not putting on my Ooh, should i wear my fancy i don't oh. know i'll be on my feet all day i know that's going to be something i hadn't thought of that I hadn't... <laughs> it's hard being a celebrity it's oh hard. yeah i don't know what to do what to think about that anyway we'll see okay we'll see what i'll happens. go make your bagel well thank you i'll do it I love it. Thank you so much, Jen. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Nelson says, good morning, Auntie Jen. Uh, good morning, Jen, from John. Um, I got a stink offer for 2.30 Friday at 5.15, trying to catch a jump. Rob is saying, way to go, buddy. Uh, pushing out uh, some contract, putting on contract. AB, hey, Uncle B, if SoFi takes a run to 19 today, anything wrong with selling a few 19 and a half or $20 calls? No, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Nothing. Morning, everybody. Uh, sounds like Uncle Bruce needs some edibles. Help me stay asleep at night. Um, will you be celebrating uh, Thanksgiving and eating turkey? Um, probably not eating turkey. 
uh, we, we're, we're going to celebrate. <laughs> uh, I'm going to celebrate Thanksgiving by doing nothing. Uh, yeah, that's how I'm going to celebrate. I, I'm going to get a rest and just recharge my batteries. Um, our daughter comes in on Friday um, and we're taking the weekend off to be with her and her boyfriend. And, uh, you know, then we'll, then we're back at it Monday morning. So, uh, I've got a, uh, I got rest to get through and then gearing up for the meet and greet with all that. And I've got one-on-ones next weekend lining up. And so I, I got work to do. I've, oh, just a little, little break. Uh, what can I say? The behave Bruce, um, polka, squeaky beds, German Saturday nights. Oh man. Uh, do it, Jen, auntie, auntie Kreskin. Um, no more than four. Thank you for this donation. Thanks for what you do, Uncle. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and Jen. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, I'm wondering if, if Jen and I should go to In-N-Out for Thanksgiving. Uh, that'd be great. Uh, we went out last night, and we went to uh, Panda Express. I love Panda Express. I just love it. You just point and shoot. I'll have some of that, some of that. Love that. Oh, love that. It, it's delicious. Jen and Bruce getting busy here. Um this is why I did my Thanksgiving shopping a month ago, says uh, Auntie PC. Uh, th that's here during the holidays. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> stock markets. You got to wear your pimp clothes, man. Uh, <laughs> can you wear that pimp suit? You know, show show everybody that pimp, that pimp outfit that you can wear right here. I, I should wear this to the meet and greet right there. Get my pimp outfit on, man. Uh, yeah. Jen loves it when I wear my pimp outfit. She goes, what? No, what? No, what? No, what? You know, that's what she does. And wear my pimp outfit, baby. Oh, yeah, I'm all dressed up. That's looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, yeah, maybe that's what I should do. Oh, baby, uh, what can I say? Um, that was the, the old meet and greet sign in front of the Regal Cinema. cinema. Now we're in front of, we're going to be in front of the, uh, we're going to be in front of the, uh, Outback, uh, in front of the Outback Steakhouse. As a matter of fact, uh, I think I have new artwork for you. Yeah, I do, right here. Look, check this out. Check this out. Um, here we go. Let me kind of take care of this right here. I'll do that. Go here. Go there. Check it out. Right in front of the Outback, baby. Ah, the Tesla. Uncle Bruce and his Jennifer Aniston look like wife. Look at that. Come and meet and greet updates December the 11th. In Ontario, right across the street from Ontario Mills Mall. Uh, forget the water in the background. There's <laughs> there's no ocean there. But, yeah, the Outback Steakhouse. We're going to be at the Outback in uh, in Ontario Mills Mall there, uh, just south of it on on the uh, on the Ontario Mills Parkway, uh, which is the road that surrounds the mall. Come and join us. Uh, I don't think I'll be wearing a suit and tie, though. I don't think I'll be quite dolled up like that. I'm not sure about Jen. Some tells me she might or might not be wearing that outfit i'm not a hundred percent sure but we'll, we'll we'll see what happens <laughs> oh we're looking forward to this it's gonna be a lot of fun a lot of fun um let me get this straight says lighten up Uncle Bruce, let me get this straight you sell a covered call the strike hits and you get taken out uh you buy back in at a higher strike price uh it seems like you'll have less and less funds each generation no that you know you haven't got it straight you haven't got it right at all you're completely blowing it, lighten up. You're completely blowing it. Uh, what happens is you, you write the call. And uh, if the shares do go up, it all depends on how far they go up and how fast they go up versus how long your option lasts for and what kind of a premium you got. In other words, lighten up. You got to watch my classes because you obviously have not watched any of my classes. You're completely guessing what's going to go on. And you think that this is a losing situation. And you're wrong. Um, what you will do is if your stock does go up, like like GameStop went up just this week, last week, this week, um, you'll buy your calls back and rewrite new calls at higher strike prices further out in time. And the premium you receive will be more money than the cost of the call you have to buy back. So if you write a call for $10 and you have to buy it back for $25, you're going to write a $30 or a $35 call to replace the $20 or $25 call you're buying back. So you're bringing in $1,000 when you wrote the first one. 
you're then paying $25 to buy it back, but you're getting $35 to write the next one, which means you're adding another thousand to the thousand you started with. You have 2000 in your account cash now. You've written a call at a much higher strike price than the stock's trading at, and all you've sacrificed is the clock. You've given up more time for this whole procedure to work, and you rinse and repeat if necessary. If the stock wants to keep going up, you keep doing the same thing. And one of my, one of my viewers said to me the other day, well, the way you're talking, Bruce, if this stock were to really go, like, you know, goes to 250, then it goes to 280, then GameStop goes to 325, then it goes to 390, you're talking about writing like five and $600 call contracts for like January 2024 on these rollovers. Like by the time you, you know, you do one, you're going to be way out to J January 2024 you're going to sell a call for like $500 and you're going to bring in like a $125 premium way out there. If that's, that's what the stock's going to do. And I'm going, yeah. So if at that point you get exercised because the stock went to 550, you're going to get 500 a share plus your 125 premium you got for that last call, right? 625 for your stock. That you bought for what 120 bucks 100 what's your average 140 170 285 what, what's your average and you got a problem you're sitting on all this cash and if the shares kind of plateau for a while and then give a little ground back and they they come all the way down to 350 they crash all the way to 350 you got taken out at 625 your cash is in your account. It's sitting there. You could just buy the stock back at 325 or 350 and write another call against it now for 400. What am I missing here? I uh, maybe I I think you know what it was. I did the classes. That's right. That's why I know this stuff. Maybe that's what you got to do. Hey, Bruce, you got to wear the pimp suit some platforms. Maybe it's time to take classes, folks, uh, and then criticize the strategy. How about that? So you're saying that anti-gen plays a mean kazoo in the bedroom, Uncle Bruce? Uh, um, I'm not saying nothing. Uh, you got to go to Denny's or somewhere and have Thanksgiving dinner, Bruce. There you go. in and out is closed on Thanksgiving. Oh, no. Uh, no, Bruce, you need to have turkey dressing, cranberry sauce, green beans, mashed potatoes, gravy rolls, pumpkin pie, pecan pie. I don't know if I need that. I I, I really, you know, uh, oh, Costco pumpkin pie. Yeah, the pumpkin pie down here is not as good as Canadian pumpkin pie. The the Costco Canada pie, way better than the Costco down here pie. Sorry. We, we bought a cheesecake. Bought a brand new, beautiful Costco cheesecake. Can't wait to dive into that one. Anyway, you bet three. Um, I'm starting to marinate my turkey now. Got all the bells and whistles. It's going to be a... Be a, a great Thanksgiving. Hope everyone reading this has a great Thanksgiving day with loved ones. Right on. I was watching uh, with Jen and Friends yesterday, and I'm at season nine now. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, what else is going on? Um, <laughs> you you better get an animal style when you go to that restaurant. Um <laughs> Did anyone send an invite to the actual Aniston? I'd love to see Uncle Bruce's reaction if she showed up in the crowd. Um, a little, little competition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, now yeah. you riled up Jen. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. See this? Oh. oh. Yeah. Can she make that? Yeah. Can <laughs> can the can the real Jen for Aniston? I don't Aniston, think she ever would. <laughs> I don't think she'd ever make one of those. Uh, has no clue how this is made. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Bruce, for clearing that up. Okay, lighten up. <laughs> And my, my cutting skills were off today. Uh, well, yeah, there are. <laughs> this is Laurel and Hardy. This is a Laurel and Hardy. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh, my gosh. We got some green on our stocks right now. Um, uh, Rocket Lab, 1468 up 13. SoFi, 1816 up 36. GameStop up 60 cents. Matterport, 2793 up 198. And Emmy up 2. I'm sure the volumes will be down today. Oh, it'll slow up as the afternoon yeah. comes along. ATIP up 3 cents. So and Smart Rent game. up 43 cents on Smart Rent. 980 on Smart Rent, kids. <gasps> Took a shot. Oh, 56,000 volume. We're up 43 cents. 56,000 shares. Maybe somebody is has caught on a short trade. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, there you go. Yeah. You are. Thank you, Jen. It's hot, so clean. Do you want me to take your coffee? Oh, this is done. Thank you. Yes, I finished that off. Yeah, it's, it's done. Okay. There's no more. Oh, fabulous. There is no more. 
There is no more. <laughs> There's only Zulu. Mmm. Lovely. 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 Mm. <laughs> Nick, Uncle Bruce, when you sell a covered call, sure, you collect the premium. Uh, but when you buy it back, you have to give up, you have to give part, you have to give some part of that premium you collect it back. Am I missing something here? If you write a call, and you bring in 10 bucks and then you have to buy it back for say $20. You, you pay $20 to buy it back, right? So you're down 10 bucks on the transaction on the call. Of course, your stock probably is up 15, but never mind. So now you're writing a new call to replace the old call, okay? The new call will be at a higher strike price than the stock's trading at. So it'll be like $10 out of the money or $5 out of the money. So that's the first move you're making. The second move you're making is you're writing a call that's longer in length. It has longer to live than the first one because the first one might expire this Friday or next Friday. Well, the new one might be two or three Fridays out. It might be that much or longer. And because it's a longer time contract and it's just ahead of the money, you'll bring in a fat premium on a longer term call. And the trick is that if you buy back a call that you sold for 10 at 20, you buy it back for 20. You now want to write a call that you get 25 or 30 for. So you shop around until you see the call that you can get that kind of money for, and you write it. So now you have a new call written against your stock that's $30 higher on the strike price. That might be a one-month contract instead of a one-week contract, and you have more cash in your account. There's the deal. Now, the stock backs off. And it comes back half the gain. So <clears throat> GameStop went to 252. It's now 217. You wrote a 240 call on a rollover. Those 240s are trading in way less money than what you sold them for because you sold them for top dollar when the stock was running. Now, the stock might go higher, you know, after you write for a while top out and then call come down and pass you on the way down to keep going those calls will eventually drop a lower price than what you sold them for plus remember they do have a time depreciation factor built in so if you wrote 240s and the stocks at 217 you're out of the money those calls are worthless except for time so you know in the back pocket you got the clock as your weapon but in any event this morning they were 208 the shares the 40s were 32 out of the money. There are viewers buying back calls for 40 cents on the dollar, what they wrote them for. And they end up, you know, selling the last call for 40 bucks. And then they buy those back for 20, 22, 18. And that's just a quick drop, not a long-term drop. And they take that 20 bucks back, <clears throat> okay? And, and that compensates them for the rollover to start with. They now immediately write another contract. You're gonna write maybe 225s for this Friday, next Friday, the Friday after. You are always writing contracts that you're looking for expiry. You're looking for shrinkage on, always. The stock just stays level for a while. Contracts drop. Sometimes you get lucky. You write a call, a 220 call right now on GameStop. As um, that dies Friday or next week Friday. <clears throat> and an hour from now, the stock's at 205. You get lucky. It, it drops 12 bucks a share in an hour. I don't know. It does it. This. GameStop does that. So you write a call for eight bucks and the stock drops $12 a share and you buy the call back for two. You made a $600 profit in an hour. You wrote 10 of those calls. You made six grand in an hour. 
The stock comes back up to 215 later in the day. You write another 220 call for next week, Friday, again, whether it's 1, 5, 8, 10, however many you want. You can rinse and repeat this all the time if you want. Need to do a rollover? You need to do a rollover. You, you, you get a quick hit? You get a quick hit? Take the money. Okay. Mm, look at SoFi. Look at Rocket Lab. Look at Matterport. Rock, Rocket Lab, 1479 up 24. SoFi up 51 to 1832. GameStop up three bucks, 217. Matterport, 2825 up 230. ME up three cents. Spire only down nine cents. ATIP up four and a half. Smart Rand up 54. Lovely. Lovely. This is cool. I love this. Very good. The Dow's down 117. SP down 10. NASDAQ down 34. Okay. <laughs> Uncle Bruce at meet and G at the meet and greet Jen will just be a floating arm. <laughs> mm. If SoFi could just get that bank charter announce it right now, that would be great. <laughs> mm. I'm looking at January 30 covered call on Matterport, says Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No mass idea seeing. I was getting a bit uncomfortable with the $10, $15 puts I wrote on SoFi for April 2022. So I sold another 10 puts for a $12.50 strike for January 2023. Now looking to buy back my Aprils at pocket the difference how about that and the stock is going up nice so far 1840 1843 beautiful Matterport up 231 this is great smash through 28 Matterport right through 28 like a hot knife through sup butter Rumble, Matterport, rumble. <laughs> so fight. Here we go, baby. Zzz. Nice. Can you imagine how people panicked on SoFi are feeling right now? Eighteen forty eight on SoFi, fourteen eighty on Rocket Lab. Nice. Smart ran up fifty five, nine ninety two. Mm -hmm. SoFi just went to full forest gump. No one sold so far. It was a ruse. <laughs> Carol OV, thank you, Carol, for the $10 super sticker. Thank you. Thanks, Uncle Bruce. I'm glad I listened to you and didn't do something stupid. There you go. Not making mistakes. Not making mistakes. That's the secret here. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the guys that were buying 19 and $20 calls on uh, November 26th for SoFi this Friday at six cents. She's coming for you, 1848, it's coming.
Is Spire finally reversing? Four, fifty-six and a half. Mm -mm, my sofis are turning green again. Twenty-two fifties. Mm, Rocket Lab fifteen dollar calls for April are like three bucks. Yikes. Hey, Uncle Bruce, I got a hundred shares of SoFi to sell a call on. Is it the right time? Well, you know, it's uh, now up seventy three cents to eighteen fifty four. So let it run, and maybe you'll write twenties or twenty two fifties or something like that. Hmm. Let's SoFi break nineteen. Let's see what happens. Mm, mm, mm. Rocket Lab call premiums are in the money. Anti PCs, the 19 and the 1950 calls for um, so far are 10 and 18 cents each. DM says, I bought some, I bought four $18 SoFi calls like 30 minutes ago. <clears throat> 1856 on SoFi, up 75. Up 256 on Matterport, 2851. And me up 12. I kept buying so far on the dip, I'm nearly even again. I am the guy buying the six cent calls for SoFi 20s on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it pays off, says Rob. Thanks, Rob. It's just a gamble. Right on. Dow's down 110. Near the high of the day. We're down 8.3 on S&P, down 26 on NASDAQ. The markets are improving. The big markets. They're coming around. We'll see if we have an up day on the day here today. If we get a big turnaround here. We'll see if there's any anything like that going into the last trading day before Thanksgiving. Mmm, bagel's good. Stocks have been going up while I'm having my bagel. I love that. Those Matterport 30 calls are getting better looking all the time. Eighteen fifty on so far. Matterport up two fifty. <clears throat> Looking good. M E at eight ninety four. Oh my. That bagel is so good with the cheese on there. Mm. Mm, so nice. Rob says, I picked up 15 of those $20, $20 Friday sofas with you for nine. Let's ride or die. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Eighteen forty-eight on SoFi. Come on, SoFi. Take a shot to 20 bucks. Let's go.
Yes, Rob, laughing out loud. Love it. Bruce, eat another bagel, man. This, these stocks are going up when you eat the bagel. Keep eating. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my. ATIP up 4.5 cents. Smart rent, 9.85, up 48 cents. Volume, 80,000. That's it. 80,000 volume. That's all. My. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Watching all these different quotes, watching all these different stocks. 1470 on Rocket Lab up 15. SoFi 1844 up 63. GameStop up $1.80 to 215. Up now 130. Um, Matterport up 209 to 2804. ME up 11. Spire up uh, down 12 cents. ATIP up 3. Smart rent up 48. Those are the uh, indications here at the moment. Um, maybe we should have that Bruce turn that lamp off. <laughs> what lamp? I know what what lamp are you talking about. I have no idea what you mean here. Um, there's no lamp. <laughs> Mm. We have 608 people here right now. We have received 383 thumbs ups today. Thank you for getting me there. We're just short of 400 now. Hopefully we can break the 400 barrier very quickly, um, get through 400 thumbs ups and work our way to 500 today. Just before Thanksgiving. Thank you everybody for helping out. If you could, thank you very much. 389 now, 11 away from 400 thumbs ups. Thank you. Keep those thumbs ups coming in. 395, five to go, and it's going to happen right here. Boom, 398. We're going to break 400 now, and we're going for 500 thumbs ups on this telecast. There it is, 401 and climbing. Thank you so much, everybody, for helping out with these thumbs ups. Hit those thumbs up uh, buttons as hard as you can, as quick as you can. 405 now, 95 away from 500 now we're 93 away from 500 407 in the door 410 90 to go thank you all so very very much 411 now and climbing fantastic rocket lab 1463 up eight so 1846 up 65 cents um ME 215 57 up 167 Matterport up a dollar 97 to 2792 ME 889 up 6 Spire down a dime ATIP up two and a half Smart Rent up 53 to 990 Sextera down a penny about to go green on Sextera 955 the high of the day on 29,000 shares Absolute quiet Rob, I think you have a good idea going here. It's time to put up some of these neat emojis to get these stocks to go higher right here, right now. Let's go, baby. Come on. Let's roll. Get those neat emojis going. Woohoo! Get this market higher. Yay! There it is. Can't stop it. Can't help it. The markets are going to surge now with the knee emojis taking over. Fabulous. <laughs> Thank you, one and all. Oh, man. Okay. Mm. Orion, hi, Uncle Bruce. I'm thinking of buying 750 ME calls for July. They would cost 245. Is this a good deal? Uh, they are in the money, $1.36. Yep, I'd buy those. You betcha. Yeah, ME 750s. Yes, indeed. Grab those. Grab them up. Yeah. <laughs> Be the lamp. <laughs> there is no lamp. Um, uh, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> at least Spire volume is improving day to day. Let's hope so. Come on, Spire. You know you can do better than this. 334,000. We're now at uh, 455.8, down 9 cents, 9.2 cents. Come on, Spire. 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I sold a $30 December Matterport for two bucks. This is easy. Easy $200. Beautiful. And let's go, babe. All right. Let, let's hey, go down that train. Drive that price of those 20s for Friday. I want so far. Um, big swings on GameStop. Can you be bored? Uh, Ryan says thanks. Right on, man. Let's go. When are we going to get a lamp emoji? When, when are we get one of those? Um, eighteen fifty on SoFi popped up again. <laughs> Come on, Spire, hit three so I can buy a thousand. I got my stink bid for Friday on these SoFi calls. Not going to say what though, because I know your sharks will undercut me and screw me up. Uh, sometimes, Rob, it, 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 it pays not to even mention what you just mentioned. Uh, sometimes, you know. Uh-huh. 1850 on SoFi shares right now. Oh, boy. <laughs> 28 on uh, Matterport. 28.14. And GameStop 215.72 up 182. Uh, the Dow down only 108. Coming on again. Uh, we might be coming on again on the market. Oh, broker rejected my stink offer. Ah, uh, stink offer. I'll laugh a lot. He's at 99. Uh, I always place a bit slightly higher than what you post. Uh, guess they didn't believe in it. Laughing out loud. Uh, <laughs> so far, 1848 down 68 cents. GameStop 216 up two bucks. Matterport 2808 up 212. Okay. Rob, they're laughing with you, Carol. We're laughing with you, Rob. Um, swings all over the place right now. 435 thumbs up, 65 to go to hit 500. Thank you, everybody, for getting close, helping me get closer and closer to the uh, to the 500 level on the thumbs ups. Uh, that's good stuff. Um Beautiful. We're down eight cents on Spire. It's coming higher. That's right. What, seven, four thirty-seven now on the uh, thumbs up. Four thirty-nine. Sixty-one to go on the thumbs ups, and we hit five hundred. Now we need fifty-seven thumbs ups. We're at four forty-three now. Fabulous, guys. Thank you so much. Let's get the five hundred thumbs ups this morning. Hit that button hard, hard, hard. What can I say? Four forty-three right now. Fifty-seven to go. Four forty-five. Fifty-five thumbs ups left. And we've got 500 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Let's go. So far, 1851, uh, trying to go higher. 1858 is the high of the day on SoFi here. Uh, we're now 1851, trying to break into new high territory on the day. Up 70 on SoFi right now. 1852, now we're six cents away from the high of the day on SoFi. Trying to break out to another high level, higher level for the day on your SoFi shares. That would be great. Eighteen fifty two last trade. Eighteen fifty three now. Another another little higher move there. Showing those twenties trading at eight to nine cents for Friday. Showing the nineteen fifties at thirteen to fifty. Showing the nineteens at twenty four twenty five. Showing the 1850s that are in the money, 43 to 44. They're three cents in the money. $18 contracts, 71 to 73. They're 53 cents in the money. Uh, the 1750s are 102 to 112, just at the money, barely ahead of it. 17s, buck 50 in the money, uh, showing a 158 offer on the $17 contracts that expire Friday on SoFi. 1849 right now. 1848 right now, a little pullback happening as we speak. 
There you go. Three hundred forty thousand volume on Spire. When it's six times higher, I'll get it, it'll get to ten dollars in no time. There you go. Uh, Socius, good afternoon, fellow simpletons. Uh, a little late to the party today, but uh, but I'm number 446. I'm checking in. What is happening? Beach Boy, so I guess just to sit on the GameStop cover call February 200s and June 220s, even with the April 270s, and wait for a big run to roll over. Well, either an up move or a down move um, is what we're waiting on here. 216.91 on the stock, up three bucks. We're just kind of in around the neighborhood. Uh, we we bought, bought them out of 208, climbed back now to 216, 217. But the volume is just not there to sustain this move. That means the GameStop shares could back off again at any time. If they back off uh, to the 2, 205, 200 level, um, there may be opportunities to score some cheap buybacks on these contracts. We'll just see. Uh, we've got a day off tomorrow. That's a day lost. We got a half a day Friday. Then we trade on Monday, and we could well be here or less than here. Let's see what happens. Um, indeed, this channel will own the float on Spire. It's only a matter of time. We will own the float on Spire. <laughs> Four sixty-two down three cents on Spire. <laughs> And we're up five and a half on um, ATIP. Uh, we're moving up on both uh, both fronts here. Definitely better at the moment. Um, mm, SoFi right now eighteen forty five. Up sixty four cents. Uh, Matterport up two hundred three to twenty seven ninety eight. Spire down four to four sixty one. The low of the day on Spire, uh, four forty six. Now four sixty two. Sixteen cent recovery in the last half hour. Uh, Three hundred fifty seven thousand volume here. Uh, that deal is going through. Uh, so, you know, I expect some uh, a buy wave. I expect a buy wave into the stock. I just do. I'm just expecting it, um, and it's going to happen. It's going to be brutal. And it's going to move the market quickly past five bucks. Um, it just will. It, it's just going to happen. Um, too much cash in people's hands that like the company. And uh, 90 million American is coming into this, possibly coming into this stock or more. Um, I just I just sense Spire is going to get a buy wave of some cash. And that's the stock this cheap. It's going to buy up a lot of paper. If it's available, uh, ATIP up five and a half cents to three fifty one. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, amazing. Um, SoFi eighteen forty one. GameStop up a dollar ninety two. All right. Ooh wee. Mm. I just picked up some nineteen fifty SoFi calls for this Friday at a dime each. <clears throat> um, just dropped my stink ask by five cents. They accepted it. I was wondering when people are going to buy those 19 and 19 and a halves. Um, well, Rob's at 94 now, says Cheddar. <laughs> uh, Uh, so, Exact Earth being a Canadian company, if they get lots of Spire stock and uh, and Thursday uh, in Canada ain't a holiday, can this cause a big block of Spire purchase come Friday Monday? Yeah, yeah, there could be a, a, a pent up demand for Spire stock first thing Friday and and then Monday. Yeah, could well be uh, four sixty two right now, down only three cents. Um, you know, I mean, if, if 300,000 shares of buying came into Spire in the first hour on Friday 
at a million of buying came in on uh, all day Monday, uh, this would be five fifty to six bucks on Monday afternoon. I mean, there'll be a lot of folks who'll jump on this with the Canadian buyers. They'll jump all over it because of the momentum. There'll be a lot of day trading going on here. Uh, but then, you know, a quick run through the five level would be a no brainer. And then we're into the sixes very quickly. That could get interesting. Um, we'll see how that works. Just saying the Spire polka. Um, yeah, Spire deal expect to close by the end of November, maybe sometime before cash shares change hands. And then again, maybe not. Um, I think as we get closer, this is going to get pent up here. Um, this is November 24. Um, a week from now is no is December one, so it's going to happen between now and a week from now. Uh, Monday is November what the twenty eighth, twenty uh, ninth. I mean, it's going to happen here. Uh, I like the way you think, AB. Um, okay. Hmm. Where are we at now? Matterport, 2779, SoFi, 1832. Rocket Lab, 1465, up a dime. Um, Spire, 461 and a half, down three and a half cents. ATIP, up five and a half cents. Smart Rent, 10 bucks, up 62 cents. Right back to 10 on Smart Rent. The holiday might be over there. Uh, we're down four cents on Sextera, up to 952. Bargoons under 10 there. Um, okay. Yep, smart is green. I just hit ten bucks. Um, mm, now we'll see how it works out. Keep going, smart rent. There you go. Just keep on going, smart rent. Ten bucks up sixty two cents. How about that? Now, that's exciting. There you go, NTPC. That's exciting. Uh, there you go. Spire, 461, down 4 cents right there. That's where we're at on the Spire shares. 351.5 on ATIP, up 5.5 cents now. Um, yeah, these cheap stocks, boy, if they go, ooh, 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 man, is that going to have an impact here? Spire, ho. Ho, ho. <laughs> That's right, Spire. That's right. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hans Gruber and the boys are going to have a real surprise on Spire. Ah, uh, yes. Their little game is about to be over. Ah, uh, yes. There's a guy who's uh, flexing his toes on the carpet. And uh, he did it. Uh, so far, uh, and he, he did it. Uh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> no. <laughs> Four sixty-two on Spire down three. <coughs> We're coming on on Spire. We're coming. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the four hundred Spire. I need to be at a cool thousand shares right now. The ho, ho, jinx. Oh no. Ho, ho, ho. We're down three cents on Spire. And only down three cents on spy. I should have kept my mouth shut, says Andy. Oh my, says Rob. 462 down three. Uncle Bruce, I just finished loading up on May 20, 22. Uh, $5 calls. Now let's watch my account either explode in a good way or implode in the worst way. Well, let's see what happens. I, I, I'm i not even sure what, what stock you're talking about, Spire. I'm hoping you're talking about Spire. I'm an idiot, uh, says Andy. Spire down three and a half cents. Uh, ATIP up six, 352. Look at that. It's coming on. SoFi 1828, GameStop 215, uh, Matterport 2762. Spire down three and a half cents. I have 3,000 Spire shares. Just praying this pays off. Uncle Bruce, do you know what a pirate's favorite letter is? Yeah, I know what 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 is it? Um, anybody know? Uh, pick knows true, true. Um, I'm surprised the spire still held down. How long until a pop? It might be happening right now. The beginnings of the beginning. 
the the uh, down only two cents 463 this is it this could be it right here um i wouldn't haunt also see the possibility for spire to go up and get out of the way what is left to be gained short the stocks at 450 well you know he has that he has that uh rocket launcher he thinks he's really got it going he's got the detonators and he's figuring he's gonna blow the roof but um there's this guy rubbing his toes in the carpet getting all juiced up here ah uh, Fly in the ointment, you know. Uh, we're up seven cents on ATIP, three fifty-three on ATIP. Yep. Oh yes, that was Spire. Yes, uh, BW is saying I got Spire. I got Spire. Um, so should AB. Well, we can't trade stocks in the U.S. market. The market's closed, but if the stocks are registered in other countries like GameStop, I think it'll be traded on the German market during these days. Most people, this is the, but they truly love the whatever. Uh, here's a quote for you. I I came, I came to kick uh, something and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> Who comes in and, and is like, I'm going to sell a bunch of SoFi at 1850. Stop. Stopping the rally. Jeez, uh, paper-handed wiener babies, boomers, and fleebs. I don't know 25 letters in the alphabet. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> Spire down two cents, 4.63. Oop, half a penny down now, 4.64 and a half, down half a penny. Spire about to go green. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, boy. Um... 3.53 on ATRP. Oh, my gosh, my gosh, my gosh. Uh, yep, having fun now. Having some fun, fun, fun till Daddy takes the T-Bird away. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, it's so much fun. So much, so much, so much fun. So, so, so much fun. Uh, where is that thing? Um, uh, where is that thing? Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, fun, fun, fun. How, how, how? We're up a half a penny on Spire. 465.5 ATIP up seven cents, ME down a penny, Matterport up 183. Uh, we've got uh, uh, we got SoFi 1841 coming on again. Uh, we're up six on Rocket Lab, we're um, up 59 on Smart Rent to 996. Come on, Smart Rent, we're down four on Sextera. We're going to be green on maybe everything. Uh, we're ME down a penny. Four cents on Sextera. Everything else is green. All the eight former SPACs have turned green this morning. Uh, the Dow's down 82, high of the day. S&P down 9.6. NASDAQ down 50. We could have uh, an update on the whole thing. How about that? Oh, my, 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 my. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> stop, says ITBC, please. Um Yep, alphabet jokes for everybody. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. So far, eighteen forty-one. Help us. <laughs> Bruce having fun. Coiling. Uh, Spire alert is green. Uh, he needs a soundboard. Um, neat, 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 neat. Uh, uh oh, Spire on the move. Um, Spire on the move. Up a penny. Um. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, I was hoping for a Black Friday sale today on Uncle Bruce's picks. Maybe I guess it continues tomorrow. Um, oh, that ho 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 sound bite proves that Bruce always wanted to be a wacky radio DJ. <laughs> Whoa, we're green everywhere. Oh, are we green all over the place? Uh, Sextera down only three cents. Smart rent up 59. ATIP up six and a half. Spire up one and a half cents. ME unchanged. It's that's a green arrow. Matterport up two twenty five. GameStop up two bucks. SoFi up sixty six. Rocket Lab up eight. Everything is green except Sixtera. Oh my 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 my. Eighteen forty seven on SoFi. Oh, we could go be going higher on SoFi. 
could be going up higher. That ho ho sound bite proves that Bruce always wanted to be a DJ. Uh, I'm a radio announcer. Uh, my entire board is green. Even my puts. Time for a beer, baby. We're going higher. Mm, mm, mm. 1846 on SoFi. High of the day, 1858. Now 1847 on SoFi. It's coming. It's coming for a new high, baby. Uh, SoFi volume now is 15.7 million shares. Okay. Okay. Um, Spire up two cents to 467. Spire's green on a volume of 383,000. The high of the day, 367 and a half. We're a penny away from the high of the day on Spire. ATIP 354 up eight cents. This is the high of the day on 231,000. ATIP high of the day. Oh my. Sold Matterport January 30 for 360. How about that, Jennifer? Way to go. Um, let's see. The Roddy Piper, another great Canadian. Uh, we need a new joke category. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, six tear still down three cents. Uh, <clears throat> oh my. 1848 on SoFi. 1849. On SoFi, eighteen fifty now on SoFi. We are eight cents from the high of the day on your SoFi kids. Eight cents away from the high of the day, climbing on SoFi. Twenty eight thirty nine on Matterport. Um, Me up four. Spire up four to four sixty nine. New high of the day on Spire, I believe. Yes, it is. This is the high of the day on three hundred ninety thousand Spire high of the day. Atip high of the day. Oh, my, 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 my. We have got things going on here, don't we now? Don't we just? Oh, my goodness gracious. Mm -mm -mm. Lovely. Let's rock and roll here. Let's go. The only thing I've ever learned about talking with Kenny, don't, don't trash Brian Williams. Uh, so I bought those uh, SoFi $20 Friday calls for 9 and they're tracing for 8 Should I average down? <laughs> Rob wants to know. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. I got some for 5 yesterday, says uh, Cheddar to Rob. SoFi, 1845. little pause and perhaps another run higher. Maybe. Maybe that's what it's going to do. 2843 on Matterport. Going higher now. Aspire up 3 cents and ATIP up 7.5. Um, let's go. Let's go here. 1846, 1847 on SoFi again uh, at the moment. 28.52 on Matterport. The high of the day today was uh, 28.59, seven cents away for Matterport to hit a new high, 2.8 million. So it too is trying to hit a new high. Watching all kinds of stuff going on here. Good stuff. Way to go, taking some uh, money off the table for Matterport. Grabbing $30 calls, selling $30 calls. Way to go. Uh, the Good job, you guys. Get paid to park that Matterport in your parking stall. Get paid for that. Dow's down 55. That's the high of the day now. S&P only down 399. NASDAQ down 21. These markets are coming around right now. There's some money coming into this market. Good. Good, good. Um, there's fights for uh, SoFi, whether it's going to over 1850 or not. I don't think it's going to stop at 1850. I think it's going to go, when it goes through it, it'll it'll have a shot to the 1860, 1870. Uh, the $19 barrier will be entertaining, and that might be hit today. It might be. 2805 on Matterport, a little backing up here. Um, ME is up a nickel. Aspire up three cents. ATIP up seven and a half. Yeah, I just want to say thanks to everybody helping me uh, make time go by faster at work. Um, <laughs> I'm totally banking on Friday for those $20 calls on SoFi. Well, what time's the market open Friday? Closing at 1. 
Um, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, 9.30 to 1 o'clock is what I believe the market to be as well. Yeah, baby. 18.48 on SoFi coming back up here to 18.50. Spire up three. ATIP up eight. Uh, SoFi 18.48 right now. And then backed off to 18.45. It's jumping. SoFi weekly premiums not bad. Four sixty eight on Spire up three. <laughs> Red solo cup is saying I, I sold my covered call at what I thought would be the high of the day. Uh that started the bull run. You're all welcome, everybody. There you go. If I, if I want to take a nap, I'll listen to Brian Adams, says the NTPC. Eighteen <laughs> forty on SoFi, eighteen thirty nine, eighteen forty. Um, Twenty eight forty two on Matterport. Uh, Spire up three. That's four sixty eight. Uh, ATIP up seven and a half cents. Uh, smart rent back to ten bucks, up sixty four cents. Uh, we're up two cents on Sextera. Everything is green. Every one of them. Rocket Lab up eight, SoFi up fifty six, GameStop up two twenty five, Matterport up two thirty six, ME up four, Spire up three, ATIP up seven and a half, Smart Rent up sixty four, Sextera up two. They're all green, and they were mostly red this morning, and they were all red yesterday. They're green now. What more will come in here? Uh, how much more power do we get? Let's get see what's going on. Ooh, we, uh, yeah, anti uh, red solo cup too late. I already claimed the sacrifice for the team with my covered calls. DQ is laughing out loud. Um, <laughs> right on. Uh, Spire up three. ATIP up seven and a half. Smart rent up 63. Sextera up two. We're green across the board right now. Can SoFi, however, put a new run together? And hit a new high of the day. That's the question right now. SoFi, will it make it? Matterport, can it go up to the 29 level today? It's up 233 today. A nice recovery. The low of the day on Matterport, 2530. We've gained almost $3 on the day on Matterport from the low. Think about that. That's why we're some of you are now writing $30 call options. Nicely done. Yes, uh, I'm going to write the uh, Spire covered calls on 10% of my shares so it can take off for the rest of them. How about that? <laughs> AB, I had a feeling today would be positive. I can't afford Matterport anymore, says Andy PC. I can't afford it. It's too expensive. Oh, yeah. Spire up seven, ME up six. Um, Spire 472 up seven cents. It's spiking. We're up eight on ATIP. <clears throat> Spire is moving at uh, 472 now, up seven cents on 403,000. Spire is moving. Lovely, absolutely lovely. We like that a lot. Matterport puts question mark. Um, how about this movement? Matterport puts might be, have potential if there's premiums. Um, yeah, Spire up seven cents to 472. ATIP up eight. Way to go, guys. Yeah. Ooh, so if I going higher, I like the chart today, says Cheddar Stack. There you go. Uh, have you seen the price of Matterport calls lately? Anti PC is asking. 2833 up 238 on Matterport. Looking great. Um, Spire up seven. ATIP up eight. Oh, we're looking good here. Ooh, doggy. Thank you, Jennifer Smith. Thank you, Jennifer Smith, for the donation on PayPal. Thank you for that. Fantastic. Uh, we're up 7.5 on Spire, 472.5. We're up 9 on ATIP now. Up another penny. I think it's the high of the day. Laugh out loud. Whoa, Spire, says Anti-PC. Jennifer, I appreciate you. Thank you, Jennifer, so much. I appreciate these uh, donations you guys make to us. Thank you, guys. Just want you to make money. Mike and money. Oh, yeah, no weeklies on Matterport yet. Boo, Matterport puts. Uh, maybe wait till if it drops to 2025. 
Space News has an article with Spire talking about extending cryptocurrency networks via satellite. Ooh, Spire, you crazy stock. Oh, Spire needs to be $7 Friday. That'd be cool. Fair again, no one jinx Spire. Just watch it in silence. Uh, 472 up 7 on Spire. A uh, volume 406,000. Go, Spire, go. Go, Spire, go. Go, Spire, go. We're up 8.5 on ATIP. Oh, baby. Wouldn't it be great if Spire finally mooned to the teens the day before Thanksgiving? Wouldn't that be terrific? Oh, my, 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 my. 472 on Spire. And it could go on fire. Wouldn't that be something? Uh, Rocket Lab at 1462. SoFi now is uh, 1830. GameStop 215.85 up 195. Matterport 2831 up 236. ME up 7 to 890. Spire 7, 472 up 7. ATIP up 8.5 to 354.5. Smart Rent 998 up 61. Sixtera up a penny to 957. The Dow down 63. Apple has gone positive up 15 cents. Tesla's positive up 11. Uh, Tesla was down to 1,062. It's now 1120. That's a 60, $58 move up on Tesla. Markets are turning positive. Um, Royal Caribbean up 74. Goldman <clears throat> still down 595, unfortunately. It was winning when the market was dropping. Now it's dropping as the market is winning. Interesting. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Um, Spire 476 up 11 cents now. Spire 476 just jumped a nickel here or four cents. Hello. Hello. Uh, don't, don't, don't even look at it. Um, Oh, if Spire would just go to 10, I would shoot Jack Daniels' uh, fire until I can feel my toes. Uh, <laughs> freaking RCL. Look at the Spire, 475 now, up a dime. Your Spire's moving. It's moving. Um, oh, we're moving higher. Um, <laughs> Spire, 475 up a dime now. 476 up 11 on your Spire. 412,000 traded. Your Spire's moving up. It's happening, kids. Something's happening on Spire all of a sudden. They're talking crypto and Spire all of a sudden. Satellites, crypto, Spire, good. <laughs> 476 up 11 share, a cents a share after being as low as 446. We have claimed, climbed back 30 cents on Spire this morning. Hello, is anyone happy? Happier? Um, a little bit happier? Uh, yeah, Spire is moving up for 75 a share, man. Yeah, this is okay. Up 7.9 cents on ATIP, ME up 9. Uh, yeah, 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 good. Uh, 476 on Spire, up 11 cents on the day, high of the day. Right here, right now, 30 cent gain. Um, I bought eight Spire contracts, 61 cents, just to be in the cool kids Spire club. Uh, thank you for the Spire at 440, you suckers. Thank you for selling it to me. If Spire could announce that they're launching an NFT into space, the stock would climb 10 times easily. Uh, yeah, uh, what's doing with Spire? We're going higher. Yeah, babe, we're moving. Mm, beautiful stuff on Spire. We're up eight on ATIP. Go Spire, go catch catch the uh, catch the uh, market. You know, let's let's get the market all excited about this Spire, the satellite thing, the crypto thing, the cloud computing thing. Put it all together, thing. $8 bid thing, $10 offer thing, like it thing. Mm. What is this green on Spire? What is this? Nice, nice, nice. We're up eight and a half on ATIP. The chart sure looks good on Spire, doesn't it? Kind of down and whoop, straight up, looking good. Nice. Boy, that would be great. Have a real run on Spire. Oh, how about a 60 cent gain today to 530? <laughs> 
Friday, six fifty. Monday, eight bucks. Yeah, let's go. Four seventy six and a half. We're at a new high. Right now, new high on Spire. Four seventy six and a half. Going for four seventy seven. Here we go, baby. Spire's moving up. Going higher. Ooh, that's pretty. It's just so pretty to look at that. It looks prettier than Greg Maddox. Uh, okay, Bruce, don't give me a heart attack. Just casually saying up eight on ATIP, and 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 I for a second thought we were up eight dollars, not eight cents. Uh, yeah, ATIP up eight and a half cents, uh, three fifty four and a half. Uh, Spire four seventy six up eleven and a half cents. Uh, we've gained thirty one and a half cents from the low of the day on Spire today. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. ATIP was at three forty three and a half at the low, so we're up eleven cents on that one too. ATIP has climbed nicely. Uh, Spire just about just about to be up twelve cents a share right now. Just about. There's something wrong with Spire. It's going up. Says nephew Nick. What's wrong with it? Uh, what's wrong with it? The best part of watching Uncle Bruce Daily Show is. Being able to follow a whole bunch of stocks that are actually being invested in all of them, meaning you can take advantage of the up-down days on a trigger pull. How about that? Uh, to hell with 60 cents. How about a $6 pop today? Bruce, stop talking like that. Laugh a lot what's made me YOLO, my first 1,000 Spire shares. So the exact earth people have their pensions, probably majority in their company, and they're going to get, what, 10% of that dollar amount of Spire stock? They're getting, they're getting 250 Canadian cash, one-tenth of a Spire share, and I think they're going to take that money, convert it to American, and buy Spire stock with it. That's what I think they're going to do. Because they see it down here, and they're going, this was $18 a month and a half ago. I'm buying this under $6. i am buying it. Watch. You watch. Just you uh, just watch. Just just watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just see what happens here. 373. It's going to go higher. It's going, it's going to go. The Spire is going to go. You're going to rue the day you didn't buy it. You're going to go, I should have listened to that guy. That old, old guy on YouTube. Why didn't I listen to him and buy the Spire at 473 a share? I could have had it under five, and I didn't buy it. What an idiot I am. Can't believe it. ATIP 355, up nine cents. Climbing too. It's a high of the day on ATIP. Hmm, interesting, <clears throat> interesting pattern happening here. Things are moving. Very interesting. We're back to 10 on Smart Rand, up 63, 6 there, up 2. Everything's green this morning. All our stocks are green now. And Spire is looking very, very interesting all of a sudden. Just all of a sudden, it looks really interesting. 437,000 traded. Huh, that's something on the Spire. Oh, I know something. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. No spire. Come pick me up. Yeah. Kind of wondering. Could go a lot higher on the old spire. Uh. Yeah. That's right. Um. There you go. Um. Hmm. 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 Atip three fifty five up nine cents. That's the high of the day. On 274,000 shares, we're at the high of the day on ATIP now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Hmm. Bill, Bill, you got it right. They only go up. Stocks only go up. That's right. They never go down. They correct, but they never go down. They, they, <clears throat> they consolidate. You know, they profit take, but they never go down. No, that's that's true. Okay. Go, Spire, go. That's all I want to say is just go, Spire, go. Go back to where you were November 1, six bucks. Uh, why don't you go back to where you were, um, oh, around, uh, what date is that? Uh, that would have been around uh, September 22nd. 1845. Why don't you go back there? Just go back there. That's cool. Uh, we got a whole bunch of stock that we've uh, picked off here. And we'd do really well if that were to happen. That would be really cool. Really cool. We'd like it. We'd support you. We'd, we'd cheer on your efforts. Yes. Yes, we would. Uh-huh. Uh mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Dow is down 62. Uh, S&P is positive, up a point. NASDAQ up 20, gone positive. They're turning green. Uh, the Dow is the only one in the red, and it'll be, it'll come. It'll come around. Uh, we're up here, and um, that that is money coming into the markets. We got money coming in. Um, okay. Mm, 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 mm. Time to do some work. See you later in, 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 in the family. Uncle Bruce, you got it. Rob, you have a good one, buddy. Uh, we'll talk to you a little bit later. Um, see how this all kind of cooks together here. Spire, 473, up 8. Um, yeah. See you later, Rob. Uh, we're up eight and a half on ATIP. We're up eight on Spire. ME up eleven. Matterport up two hundred nine. GameStop up two seventy three. SoFi up seventy nine cent, uh, fifty nine cents to eighteen thirty nine. Uh, Rocket Lab up eight. Smart Rent at nine ninety nine up sixty two. Sixterra up two cents. And we have a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, four seventy four, four seventy five on Spire again. It's coming on again. Here it comes. Mm. Mm. 475 on Spire. Spire, 1940. I made a grand that day. Now I will make 24,000. Waiting patiently. Waiting. Uh, let it happen. Just let it happen. Well, that would be terrific if Spire got caught up in a... In a... Uh, in a... Uh, story all about meta meta stuff and um, all kinds of other neat stuff that, that'd be kind of cool yeah that'd be kind of be kind of fun um, go yeah go go 475 on on spire 475 up a dime okay Beautiful stuff. Yeah, Spire talking about extending cryptocurrency networks via satellite. That <laughs> I like the sound of that. Something cryptocurrency satellite Spire. Uh, good. Yeah, all that is all that is just just just, just drips potential. Lots of investing potential. Four seventy four on Spire. That would be pretty cool, cool bean stuff, gotta say. Pretty cool bean stuff. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, I'll be back Friday. Uh, no, no, I'll be back this afternoon at 3 o'clock and tonight at 8 o'clock. So those of you who are members of this channel, join me tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern time for the live primetime show, members only. But at 3 o'clock, I'm on for everybody uh, one hour to go in the trading day uh, for today. And then we'll take tomorrow off, and then we'll be here for half a day Friday. Uh, join me tonight, and uh, that'll be my last show until Friday morning. But uh, let's follow. Let's follow our favorites and see how they uh, perform uh, between now and 3 o'clock. And then uh, we'll run the last hour through with you and see what's going on here. Um, you never know with these stocks. You just do not know um, what how this new AB. This could be a huge Friday Monday on Spire. You never know. Yeah, dimes are nice, dollars are better. Yeah, you can do it. Right. Uh, we. You never know with these stocks. You never ever. Don't put anything past these guys. Uh, explosion at any time. Good explosion anytime. Matterport two twenty three gain twenty eight eighteen. Congrats to those of you who are writing thirty dollar calls again. Um, and uh, GameStop two fifteen sixty nine up one seventy nine. SoFi eighteen thirty four. And uh, four seventy four on Spire. We're up nine cents. Uh, really good run here. Real good run in the last hour. Um, ATIP up eight. 
Thank you, Uncle B says Beach Boy. Thank you, Beach Boy. Uh, AB, thanks, Uncle B. Uh, let's keep an eye on this market as we um, kind of go through the motions here for the afternoon. Um, Spire could be could be entertaining. Yeah, it could be. All right, guys, there it is. Uh, thank you all. Have a uh, great uh, morning, rest of your morning and afternoon, and uh, wherever you are, evening even. And uh, we'll catch up with you shortly. Thanks for those of you giving me uh, uh, thumbs ups. 490, uh, only 10 away from 500 thumbs ups. You guys are phenomenal to get me to 500 again on such a light volume that I have. Thank you, everybody, for hitting that thumbs up button. There's 491. We've got nine left to get to make it to 500, man. That is awesome. There's 497, 504. Boom. Booyah. 504 thumbs ups. 508. Thank you, everyone, for this. Uh, Tremendous assistance. It really helps uh, the channel get noticed through the YouTube analytics computers. I thank you all. F fantastic, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you this afternoon, Goyote. Yes, thanks, Uncle B. You got it. Thanks, thanks, and thank you. Um, we'll be here. Have a good one, everybody. Bye for now, simpletons. Uh, you can do it all. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, guys. We'll see you this aft at 3 in the afternoon with an hour to go. And we'll close this market down together. See you, see you soon.